It's that time again, Grant. Yay! It's time for the podcast. The podcast. It's time for the podcast, everybody. Welcome, everybody, one and all. Boys and girls, young people and old people. No Pets old people. No, no old, old people. No, we've got a we've got a very we've got a very strict uh, Nana policy here on Rage Select. Only Nanas. Nanas love Rage Select. Nanas all right? get to listen to the podcast for free. Yes, exactly. No Nana will ever be charged for listening to Rage Select ever. They're too well, old. They don't realize that it's free for everyone. That's right. They're, that's like, where do I put my credit card in? And it's like, <laughs> Nana, you don't have to do that. All oh, these boys are so nice. That's my Nana voice. By <laughs> <the way>. Apparently. <laughs> um, but welcome, everybody. I am Jeff, as always. I'm Grant. As always. Uh, I'm oh, all. I'm always grant for the most part i've always been grant you really always okay um well even on like online things i always use the name grant you just use grant yeah do you uh if somebody else already has the name grant i will generally go with baron von grant Uh i I feel it it sounds prestigious right (laughs) like you're the dictator of latveria yeah kind of um but do you ever, so if somebody else already has Grant, do you email them and try to like threaten them and muscle them off of like this yeah, message board? Hey, hey, fuck off, motherfucker. I'm Grant. That's how you got Grant at Yahoo.com, your official email address. It's, yeah. it's not as it's not as official. It's email not as, it's not. Don't email me there. But, You're going to harass another Grant. Who the fuck? Who, what Grant? Like I even, I hate the thought that on every, like every RPG, right? Every MMO, every uh, Hotmail. There's somebody out there that has Jeff at Hotmail.com. I want Jeff at Hotmail.com. Yeah, but you'd have to have Hotmail. Well, yeah, there is that. Right? But I just want it. I don't even, I don't even want to use it. I just want to make sure that nobody else gets to use it, that if somebody sends a message to Jeff at Hotmail.com, that it comes not directly that to I, my email address. Not that I want to advertise what my email address is on here. Right. But I did get a really good one on Gmail when I, I was able to nab my account early on. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I got a really good name yep. that I'm, I'm kind of proud of. Are you? Yeah, for my email address. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I tell you what, has anything unusual happened to you in the last week, Grant? We've got some news today. We've got some emails, but we've got a couple topics. And But before we do that, unusual. has anything unusual? Unusual. As a matter of fact, yes. Because I was sick all last week, so I the most unusual thing I did was take both DayQuil and Emergency at the same time. Oh. I, get, I got superpowers for a little while. Yeah? But, what know, kind of powers? It was mostly just the ability... <laughs> Urinating a lot. <laughs> every Everything was very fuzzy, and I had to pee all the time. Yeah, yes, that's, that's what it. happens with that yeah, stuff. It was very yellow. My urine was very yellow oh. Oh, day. God, drink some water. Yeah. Uh, I had an inordinate, inordinate, inordinate amount of turkey. Okay. Because it was like, Thanksgiving's last week. Too much turkey for any one man. Too much turkey for one man. I ate more turkey than there is Grant Body to eat turkey. Really? I ate how 182 many pounds of turkey. How many? Oh, God, dude, that's just excessive. Everybody <laughs> knows stop at 180. Come on. Yeah. Um, no, uh, how, did you ha- did you attend multiple Thanksgivings? Uh, yeah, well, my wife's family it lives right down the street from my family mm-hmm. in, up in uh, Dallas area. Okay. So I'm able to just drive right over to theirs. And I have to go to mine, so we get two Thanksgivings yep. for, for me. And uh, I had another little Thanksgiving festivity down here in Austin before I went up there. Right. Three Thanksgivings. I Lots saw, of turkey. You know, I went to my sister's for Thanksgiving, and then I came back over here to my house for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was weird, because I had a small plate of turkey at my sister's place, and then I, had, and then I came back, and I had... Uh, more turkey here at my place. Yeah. And strangely, when I got done with all that turkey, I felt less full than when I sit down for a single meal and eat four helpings of turkey by myself. That's a lot of the turkey for you to eat by yourself, Jeff. I, I it makes me sad. I can't eat. I used to be. I used to be that guy. You in used the, to be the champ, man. I used to be in a, in in my old friend group. Right, my idea is falling. I was that guy. I was the guy who's just like, dude, Jeff. Have you ever seen somebody eat like that? Everyone was proud of you to your face and disgusted by you around the corner. That's fine. If I've got to be <laughs> hated and feared, that's that's the that's the price you pay for being the king of eating way too much. Um, but no, I just can't do it anymore. I've no. just been eating reasonably for so long that I can't d- eat like I used to. I noticed my tolerance has slowed. I'm still able to, I, I can't drink as much as I used to, but I can still pack away a lot of beers mm-hmm. and I'm kind of shamefully proud of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed of my pride for it. I, I don't know how to phrase that. Okay. I know I shouldn't be proud of it, but I'm proud of it. <laughs> In secret? I don't know. You're secret, secret proud of it. Secret pride. Um, 
I also did something this year that I've never done before at Thanksgiving. Yeah? I had a slice of tofurkey. Tofurkey? Yes, indeed. You my uh, liberal my scum. <laughs> my, my sister invited me over to her place with her roommate, right? And her roommate's a vegetarian. And so mm. they had, like, her, her boyfriend got this amazing smoked turkey, and it was just fantastic. But then they also had a tofurkey for her roommate, who's a vegetarian. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the show, Grant, but I love vegetarian food. I'm not a vegetarian, but I love. I dated a vegetarian for a while, and I'm just like the Boca meatballs. And I love like, some vegetarian food. I think that they they have some missteps, and they desperately want to mimic meat. Right? <laughs> they are yeah. so desperate to mimic meat. But like, have like, you get ever your own shit? If you don't want to eat meat, get your own shit. Have you ever had like a garden burger? Yeah, but then like with like two like really thick cut crispy slices of bacon on top of it. No, it is delicious. It, it is fantastic, and vegetarians will look at you like you're the devil when you sit across from them eating a card burger we, with bacon. We have uh, this place here, this local sandwich shop called Thundercloud. It's kind of like Subway, but yeah. it's our regional one, but better. And they they make a they make a vegetarian chicken sandwich. They make a couple not a, not a chicken, They're not a chicken. Oh, it's so good, That's, and I love that it. chicken. Yeah. Tastes just like the Burger King chicken sandwich to me. <laughs> it tastes identical. Have you ever had a vegetarian hot dog? No. They taste exactly like regular. I mean, uh, uh, not Nathan's or Hebrew National, right? But they taste like a, a garbage Oscar Mayer hot dog and a completely tofu hot dog. They're the same consistency. They taste really? exactly the same. I have yeah. a buddy here, and well, well, he used to live in Austin. Now I think he still comes back here. He did a veggie hot dog eating contest that he hosts, hosts annually. Mm-hmm. And uh, his his name is Mike Lit. Okay, honestly, that's his <laughs> name. I, I went to college with him, and uh, he always he started hosting this stuff as I love Mike Lit. Oh. So <laughs> it was pretty awesome. He already had the name branded for it, right? And he would host he hosts these uh, veggie hot dog eating contests. I think it's fine. But anyway, Tofurky uh, is really good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it, it tastes. It oh, yeah, we really segue off of the tofu. Moderately burger. like turkey. I mean, it's turkey flavored. It's basically just a big loaf of tofu, right? Are you a tofu convert now? Are you gonna be a tofurkey guy? No, I, I love turkey, but I love. I think I like tofu as well. I mean, I like all kinds of vegetarian options. Yeah, um, but it was good. I had a slice of it, and it was just like, yeah, that's really tasty. Um, so I don't know. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cashing in my holiday turkey. Don't though. you do it? I'm not cashing my holiday turkey. That's the thing is that I'm just omnivorous. I'm like fuck it, man. I'll eat it. Whatever. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. take those Boca meatballs and throw them in some legit meat marinara sauce, and I'm good to go. Or uh, you came over to my Thanksgiving party I had the uh, other week. Yeah. And man, someone made a sriracha curry sweet potato dish. Oh, those were so good. Those were fucking they awesome. They were so good. I yeah, want yeah. that. I want, it's funny because I was telling my dad about that. He's in town. I told my dad about that and uh, I was like, I really want the recipe. He just goes, what are you going to do with the recipe? And I'm like, <laughs> it's like you're going to cook it. Give it to you guys so that you can make them. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, those were really that good. recipe from my buddy because I was like, fuck. Oh, you dude. know who brought those? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez, He's the I same guy that. who like infuses coffee with uh with whiskey and crown royal and stuff he does all this cool stuff okay yeah that was yeah. great that was great it was awesome there was also some brussels sprouts there mm-hmm. from a friend martin uh that were delish that's our friend randy actually i think that brought those really yeah the the asian kind of mm-hmm. oh those with randy yeah okay well they were whatever whoever they were fantastic yep yep they're fantastic um anyway all right well now i'm hungry Again. <laughs> and I'm now we have another hour of podcast yes. with no eating. The first nine minutes of the podcast, we're talking about all this delicious food. <laughs> it's because we're so stoned right God, now. Oh, man. <laughs> That's the problem. Don't the pull back the curtain, the wizard. Uh-oh. Don't pay attention to that, man. Um, but we have something extremely important to talk about, Graham. Mm. Very important business. Very much. I know very, what it is. Very. You got you to gotta sit down. You got to keep your shit together. Because there's a new Star Wars trailer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, I've been flipping my shit about this. Yep. Okay, so there's a lot of hate on the internet for Star Wars because mm-hmm. they, you know, they burned a bridge with those those prequels. Sure. But the fever is back, boy. <laughs> fever is back with this one. J.J., 
brought that shit, and I am psyched. I am back on the psych train. Yep. I'm ready to be Phantom Menace again and disappointed when I leave that theater. <laughs> but I'm going to go in excited. Okay, so I got three things that I want to talk about with this trailer. Okay. And uh, if you have anything, we're you gonna, add we're going to whole hog on we're this. Gonna we're going to go whole hog. Yeah. Shit. The, it's a minute 50, right? So go watch Is it. Is it even that long? I thought I, it was like 48 seconds or something. I don't even know. Um, uh, you know what? I'm going to pull it up while I talk about it so that we can take a look at it. Dope. But, all right. Uh, what all do right. you want to talk about? All right. So number one, I just want to say right off the bat, right? I was telling, I was actually talking about some of my friends at the bar the other day about this. Trailers lie like a motherfucker. Anybody who's made any kind of value judgment about whether or not this movie's going to be any good based on that trailer, you're full of shit. Stop it. Because I don't know if you remember this, Grant, but the trailer for The Phantom Menace was badass. The oh, teaser. Yeah, 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 the rolling over the great green hills with all those. Yeah, the dudes walking out of the mist. All the, the trade agreements going on. That's right. Like, oh, all shit, the papers what is back. That? Oh, what? They are agreeing on those trades. That's right. This tariff. But no, you can make a trailer <laughs> that makes anything, <laughs> that makes literally anything yeah, 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 yeah. look good, right? I, I remember the. I was really excited about the trailer for John Carter of Mars. Right. And that one, uh, not so good. Right. Not so good. Is there a way to put this on repeat? I'll just keep hitting the repeat button. Anyway, so first off, trailers lie like a motherfucker. They do. Don't is it, uh, anybody who's made anybody who's who, who sees this trailer and just goes, "That's gonna be bad." Fuck you. You don't even know. Are we gonna go piecemeal on this? No. Okay. Okay. No. The, the whole hog. The no, whole hog. I mean, are we gonna go in order? I guess. No. No. I'm just gonna keep this on repeat in the background. So okay. Can okay. All right, number two, I didn't even know this, Grant, but apparently some people have problems that there's a black stormtrooper. I saw some that. Weird I internet don't get it. Rage shit going on. Although, you know what I immediately thought? Because that's John Boyega from Attack the Block. Right. I already knew he's going to be in this because I've been following all this shit and I'm like super excited about it. Right. Also, go see Attack the Block. Any of you listening right now, it's a fucking great movie. Sure. But uh, <laughs> no, this guy pops up in that and I immediately thought, oh, it's they're doing the same exact thing as Luke Skywalker in the, the uniform because, you know, they love fucking callbacks. Mm -hmm. So he's going to he put on the uniform in disguise to escape from some shit. And now he's popping up in the Tunisian desert or whatever of uh, Tatooine and maybe, all that. I mean, maybe maybe there's or, something else. Or to he's it. a stormtrooper. I mean, we've got that. There's a shot in there of a bunch of stormtroopers in like a drop ship. Maybe it's part of the story is that he's a stormtrooper who then realizes that he's on the wrong side and he flips sides or something. It could who be that. Knows? Who knows? All I know is that if you got a problem with a black stormtrooper, also we got a problem with you. Uh, Rage yeah. select out. Okay. So Episode over. I'm sure that there's some people okay, who are all, <laughs> I'm sure there's some people who are like, but the, there's supposed to be a bunch of clones, and I'm pretty sure that we all know, right, that the clones were in the Clone Wars, and that by the time they got to this point, they're they, taking they conscripts. Were able to, they were able to fucking recruit people. Right, that they're just they were the big bosses. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. if that's your argument, then you're not the Star Wars nerd that you thought you were, because I... Like, Black, I thought they were Maori or whatever right. however that's pronounced. I don't even know. Maori? I haven't even looked because I don't want to be disappointed in humanity this many times this week to see where people are losing their shit about this. All there, right. There's just stupid people that are going to try and stupid ruin everything. Okay, so okay, check out his uniform. Right. They got all new redesigns. Yep. And I feel like it's got a little bit of like this Apple kind of modern design element to the stormtroopers because you see their helmets there they seem a little, see a little they seem a little shinier or a little bit yeah. more it's ergonomic. got this little dot on the back that yep. is like oh that's so that's so mod that's where the charging so port cool charging port goes yeah they plug them into the wall someone also pointed out in the rebels you see the rebel uh, x-wings flying yep. over the water mm -hmm. that they don't have the stars anymore of the alliance around their logo oh it's okay. just the logo itself it's just the bird yeah yeah, yeah. um all right, and then number three, the most important thing to talk about, Grant. Okay, I forgot you had your three points. Yeah, is um, some dissecting. The shit. No, no, everybody knows. Everybody knows what the third point is, and we're going to talk about it because it's been a heated discussion. And it's dumb as fuck, right? Okay. That little droid with the ball underneath it is the best <laughs> thing in this entire trailer. <laughs> is the best thing, and that's it. That's all we're talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> everybody else knows what the fuck we're talking about. The, the Jar Jar Binks of the trailer, right? <laughs> You see, I saw a post somewhere online of some guy who apparently got a t that tattooed on him. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it was yeah, just yeah, like, oh, that. dude, really? <laughs> okay. Uh oh <laughs> What if that is the Jar Jar Binks? What if that droid is the worst thing ever? I bet it's such a small little snippet scene. Um, and this guy was like, fuck yes. Yeah, but no, worse. the thing is the triple-bladed lightsaber. Triple-bladed lightsaber. And I know, okay, here's how I know that we live in a 
bitchy, complainy age, Grant. Because when the trailer for The Phantom Menace came out, I worked at Dell in a department full of nerds. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I collect Gundam figures, and I'm never going to get married. That was my boss at the time, right? Like, hard, hardcore nerds, right? Nobody had anything to complain about with that, with that episode one teaser. In fact, everybody loved it. The, the corporate network almost went down, and it was just being watched over and over and over and over and over again. Mm, here's here's what here's what I think is happening. I I don't think it's complaint so much as I think what the whole how how the internet operates. Yeah, is that one person saw this scene mm. and thought, oh, there's some uh, joke I can make out of that because that's how it, it all works now. Sure, it's who can make the first parody of, of this big thing this internet phenomenon that's going right, on right and someone made a joke about the the lightsaber oh because it blasts three what right. if it blasts four what if it blasts five right it's got a bunch of them right and then the next person is like yeah that is dumb uh, as a commentary and and then the whole thing just kind of explodes in that direction yeah of people thinking because there's one group that just wants to make a joke so that everyone else can laugh and be like, oh, yeah, I saw that. That's funny. Right. But then there's others that like, oh, you did notice that. That's a serious thing. Now I'm going to take it in a serious direction and be like, I'm really going to bitch about the, the lightsaber little elements on there. Right. Well, that It's like a, a guard, right? I uh, like our, our, our buddy John Rubio, who I do the beers with. Right. He uh, is like, really? So that's what you want to complain about in a movie full of space wizards. <laughs> They're space wizards. <laughs> I think my favorite my favorite joke meme I've seen all the lightsaber oh, ones yeah, right. Yeah. My favorite joke meme is the sand at the beginning, and they've got the voiceover, and then it's got Dokes from Dexter, and just says surprise, motherfucker, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, I think that um, I think that that the triple bladed lightsaber thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's incredibly clever. I think that it, it, it opens up ideas to me in my head of all kinds of crazy things. Um, like I love the idea that. It kind of makes a certain amount of sense about this. Is, this can, is what I thought. Because there, there, you can slide your sword down the other sword and chop the other person's cell. That's why you have those to protect yourself. Right. Well, what it what it said to me was that a lot. So much of the choreography in the original series was uh, is either like fencing, right, uh -huh. or it's like uh, like samurai, like Japanese, like a, a you know a katana style, right, yeah, where yeah. you don't have those bigger blades. But then I started thinking, like, what if this guy in the trailer? Is a Sith that fights like the fucking hound off of Game of Thrones, like He's somebody that has like armor and push into people and shit. It actually got me thinking about like why did we never see somebody like Darth Vader fight with just reckless abandon in 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 lightsaber duels because. He's mostly machine, and he can get his fucking hand chopped off. Hands already chopped off. That's uh -huh. just a robot in the first place, right? So what if we have a person that fights with more brute force than all this ballet jumping around bullshit that has a lightsaber that has those guards on it where when, you know... While we're on this, this thought train... Right. We only see that guy's one hand is his left hand. Yeah. What if his right hand is a robot hand? That's right. Because it's Luke fucking Skywalker. What? And he had a... F okay, okay that, that's one idea. <laughs> what if he's gone to the dark side just like old Papa? Uh, it's just like some hereditary thing like Huntington's or something. Right. And he just makes him go to the dark side. Mm -hmm. But also, if you look at that lightsaber... It doesn't. It, it, you see, it's a lot more jagged looking. It's yeah. like it has little arcs going. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's recklessly made, maybe by someone who d was, didn't have formal training, perhaps. Like it, it's just kind of blasting. It, it's it's yeah. It's got a lot of like lightning and shit coming yeah, yeah. off of it. Yeah. So like, what if this dude had to kind of make his own shit, and he didn't he didn't know how the other ones were operating. He had to train himself. Yep. And. And so that opens up a different possibility of like, is this just some new evil shithead? This is, is this uh, Adam Driver? Maybe that's, that's uh, no. Okay, I don't, well, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to know. I don't want anything about casting. But uh, I do like that as the as the uh, subtitle to the new one: Star Wars Episode Seven, some, some, new, some new evil, evil shithead. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, Millennium Falcon at the end, which yeah, yeah, there's yeah, been yeah. some. Like, I really have been trying to avoid like frame by frame analysis and oh, just like I haven't. <laughs> no, well, it's fine. And that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the thing is that like I don't want to know. Like there were there was a bunch of things that came through my Facebook feed that was like who the person talking in the trailer is and what does this mean and I was like nope don't want to know I want like 
watch the trailer and then go watch the movie and be like, holy shit, the movie. Are you gonna watch the full trailer? Yeah, I'll watch. A, I'll watch full trailers. Okay, but I don't. I just don't want to have. You don't want to dissect it. I don't want it. I don't want it Man, anymore. I want to dissect I, it I, because you know what I find. What's that? Even when you dissect shit like this, yeah, you're you're usually like ninety percent wrong. Right. Still ninety percent wrong. I have a bad track record of when I dissect stuff of coming up right on stuff and then it. I I would just rather go see it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I just rather okay. go see it. But anyway, I still think that people bitching about the tri- triple blade of lightsaber, and I know that I'm just I'm like oh, it's like I'm taking my pants off, and I'm just like come at me because I'm sure there's people on Rage Light who have serious problems with the triple blade of lightsaber, but. I think it looks cool. I think that um, Stephen Colbert did a video uh, yeah. on his Colbert Report. He did this little segment where he talks about it and defends it in a very nerdy way. You guys should check that out. Okay. I'm sure uh, someone will post it on here. Did you have anything else that you, you wanted to talk about in the trailer? Uh, what's up with this soccer ball R2-D2? I, <laughs> I don't we know. We did just kind of graze over that. <laughs> uh, we get to see the Millennium Falcon. Yes. Uh, obviously, some mods have been made to it. People kind of pointed out like the satellite dish is a different satellite dish. Okay. Um, kind of excited about that because we didn't see we know everyone knows i even you yep. know casting wise yep. that the big three from the the first trilogy yes carrie fisher mark hamill and harrison ford are supposed to be in this we don't get to see them in this yeah i, God, I just kind of wonder where they are oh fuck man i hope that they have tiny parts i hope that they have like five minutes of screen time between the three of them because I really just want to get to a new story. It's it's J.J. Abrams. I I'm know. imagining he's going to do the same thing as Star Trek, like a little bit like, of Leonard, like Nimoy, Leonard Nimoy, but not a whole lot. I hope so. Just because a glimmer to, to tie in the story. I don't want to see old Harrison Ford anymore. I don't want to. I, or I, okay, no. I don't want to see old Han Solo. I don't... No, let me take that back. We'll walk about one more step. I don't want to see old Han Solo acting like Han Solo from the first ones. If Han Solo is in here, I want them to acknowledge the fact that he's old and and write for him, not as like he's still I some want kind him of to cocky just be asshole. Watching Matlock. That's right. And popping Maylock. That's right. That's all he's gonna do. Oh my god, what if it, what if there's old Chewbacca in this Centrum. movie? He's all gray, gray Chewbacca now. Ch- he's balding. Chewbacca, Chewbacca's supposed to be in it, oh but god. he's probably gonna I don't think they age as fast. Well, so he's, he's probably going to be all young and spry and still fucking the bitches and looking at Han like, man, Han, you, you changed, so bro. This is, this, is the point, changed. this is the point where Jason Murphy is listening to the podcast <laughs> going, oh, God, you motherfuckers. I know how long Wookiees last. <laughs> um, I, I also saw this great image of... Uh, that guy who's holding the three lights, the three prong lights, or right? Whatever it's called, a tri saber. I tri-saber. guess is what they've been. He uh, he pulls off his hood and it's Jar Jar Binks. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yeah. One more question. Okay. Because right, I know we're gonna have to move on. Yeah, we gotta go to the did news. Did you see the George Lucas version of this? Yes, I did. Oh, the man. special edition George Lucas got version. Shit all over CGI. Yep. Every fucking. Thing. It was really so good. Terrible. It yeah, was I really good. Anyway, though, um, yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, I, I, you me know, too. I think it looks like a good trailer. I don't know. Um, that's that's the stance I've adopted. Is um, I lost a lot of my enthusiasm for Star Wars, but you know what? It's weird because I was real down on the trailers that I saw for Star Trek for the yeah. Star Trek reboot. I thought, oh, this was like shit oh, because I'm really? a big fan of Star Trek, right? Oh man, I'm so jazzed! And then I went to go see it, and I was like, this is great. This is fantastic. It's so one of my favorite trailers ever. Yep. All right. Join Starfleet. So we are now going to move on to the news. And the there's news. actually not a lot of news this week. No. Um, I think Thanksgiving kind of tamped everybody down a little bit. I mean, there's a bunch of shit that we're just going to pass right by. Short episode. All right. Bye, folks. No, we got way lots of emails oh, this week. Oh, we're back. Okay. Um, <laughs> you keep trying to get out of here, Grant. <laughs> Stop trying to leave the podcast, Grant. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's right. All right. So... Um, We've got a few news stories, and some of them are, they're all a little meh, uh, except for this first one, which is, there's a new video on Feminist Frequency. It's not, oh yeah, it's boy. not tropes versus women in gaming. It's just produced by uh, the Feminist Frequency channel, and it's produced based- Produced by Anidia Sarkeesian. And all right. It's, it's based on this Polygon article that was written a while back um, about, it was 25 benefits that um, ga- that men have, that gaming- Male, if you're a dude and you play games, you have that you may not even be, really be aware of. Sure. Um, and I read this list when it originally came out, 
and it was i mean you know i i i a lot of this is is a lot of this list and a lot of the reasons that i feel like this list is um is interesting is because it doesn't really focus as much as Anita does in her videos about hammering on the, the video games game industry as much as it's kind of about hammering on the how players interact with each other interactions online right yeah and more of that yeah and and, and the, I that. the short of it when you read this list is I I mean I don't know maybe you guys out there are all younger than me and you're all very self aware and you've thought about all this shit before but. I think that um, I, I like reading some of the stuff because it's interesting for me to see the way that things change as you get older. Um, and so the kind of the, the crux of this is that privilege means that you're able to take things for granted that other people are not able to take for granted. Of course. And this is a list of things that as a, a lady in video games uh, or as a man who as a, as a dude who plays video games that you don't have to take into consideration that women may have to take into consideration. Give a couple examples. I'll give a couple examples. Okay, so um, let's see. I will never be asked to prove my gaming cred simply because of my gender. I think that's a pretty good one, right? Yeah. My uh, gaming ability, attitude, feelings, or cap- capability will never be called into question based on unrelated natural biological functions. Right, mm-hmm. uh, I like this one quite a bit because uh, um, our oh, editor. Oh, because you're on your period, you the, can't play. Right, exactly. That's so our, um, I actually have some friends who have who have specifically told me that this has happened to them, like within the last like three or three or four years. When purchasing most major video games in a store, chances are I will not be asked if or assumed to be buying it for a wife, daughter, or a girlfriend. As this is the same issue that like the comic industry has and has had in the past and they they i feel were addressing it a little bit better and a little bit more decency sorry video game community but you haven't been you don't have a great track record like the comic industry uh, well, of segueing and integrating uh, the female audience i think you know what i think a lot of the, more resistance i think of the comic book industry i think that um i think it's easier to get the message out and influence because the primary place that you're going to want to do that is going to be in like comic stores, right? Yeah. Whereas this is targeting anonymous interactions from people online. Online. Right? And That's a huge barrier. Online right? It's a huge barrier to the entry. The biggest assholes are the loudest voices. Mm-hmm. That's so the I actually think that uh, of the videos I've seen on Feminist Frequency, I have very little... Uh, there's very little in here that I can... Uh, that I would even disagree with, right? It, uh, that, it's all... It's all really great. In fact, I think it serves as a great reminder. It, it's it's a good humbling uh, thing to read through. Right. I I often think because you know I have a daughter now. Yeah. She she is growing up in this world. It, it kind of makes me go back and kind of take stock of like how people treat each other, especially how people treat women. Right. And these things resonate with me a lot more than they did prior to. To me, having a daughter, I mean, mm-hmm. having a wife, sure, right? but you know, it's like, oh, you can handle yourself. Right. But become a lot more protective of your own little girl. I can of understand thing. that. And I'm like, yeah, I, I see this kind of hardship. They're like, yeah, you're gonna have to have other people constantly blaming your period on things. You're gonna have people uh, saying, oh, you're just a woman, so you're buying this game for your your man or whatever. You're mm-hmm. that. Oh, uh, you're a woman, so speak. F- on behalf of all women about video games. That's a good Shit one like as that. well, right? It's it's like that's that's it's fucked up that and and if you yeah, like most of our listeners probably are are a decent person and agree, yeah, this stuff shouldn't happen. It's not enough to just to just feel that yourself, but I think us in the gaming community need to do a better job of policing those trolls and be like Look, fuck you, dude. We're not going to tolerate you and your shitty attitude in our community. You know we what I think is you more than is really interesting. Actually, is the fact that rage select is so small means that we don't generally have to deal with that as much. We and, don't. And I, I think, and that I think our our community se- tends to police itself like that. Yeah. Like our our audience is kind of great, and and anyone who may like even accidentally kind of post a comment, yeah. a lot of people call them out on it, and generally be like, "Oh yeah, my bad. Yeah, I, I didn't mean it that way. It's just kind of a misinterpretation." Sure. Uh, here's here's one that I really actually think is is important to it says I can be I can be relatively sure my thoughts about video games won't be dismissed or attacked based solely on my tone of voice even if I speak in an aggressive obnoxious crude or flippant manner like that's 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 really interesting to think about of just like you know um, so I think this list is worth I think that I think that this list is worth reading sure and I don't think there's anything on here that unless you're just hell bent on 
hell bent on leather that women are shit and that you, they should be fucked with. I don't. I don't think there's anything on here that I could even argue with about why you. There's going to do... be a certain group of people that feel that by reading this, they're going to feel personally attacked. Okay. This is the same thing that happens like with the idea of white privilege or whatever. Right. They think that by reading this, that suddenly they are being judged, p- called into question as an individual. Sure. And and sure, in part you kind of are, but but not to the ex- not to the woe is me. I I never do this. So fuck you for even suggesting it like extent that well, these people always seem to cling to if okay so if, if that's the, i mean if that's the case here's the thing it's this is awareness it's very easy uh, see the thing is that i don't think that any of our fans i really honestly i mean well i don't i don't know them personally but the impression that i get from the people on our website is that you go you know here's one when i go to a gaming event or convention i could be relatively certain that i won't be harassed groped propositioned or catcalled by total strangers look look that's not a that's not a like that's not the man oppressing you. That's manners. Like, yeah. don't put your hands on people unless they ask you to. And just, you know, cut that shit out, right? Like, that's not... You're not being oppressed by saying, oh, you mean I can't just fucking squeeze them titties? Like, right? I like that's, I can't I can't squeeze that other dude's dick? Right. I mean, he's <laughs> guys sitting right there in his <laughs> banana hammock. Um, he's dressed as Zardoz. Why would he do that? So, I... I and I think that if... You, I think that there's a website up there called fatuglyslutty.com that's... Uh, uh, oh it's, a, it's, it's women who basically screen capture propositions that they get from anonymous people and voice chat conversations that they have and messages that they are sent unsolicited over Xbox Live and a few other gaming services. I think this stuff does happen and I really hate it every time that I have to it hear about happens. it happening in the community. So... The only thing that I'm going to say with this is that I think that I don't think anything on this list. I'm the first person to go. Uh, Grant and I have long conversations about Anita Sarkeesian, what she's saying about the game industry and games development, and games sure. and social stuff. I have long conversations with a lot of people about this stuff where I don't necessarily fully buy into some of the stuff that she espouses in general, right? But I don't think any of this stuff is even remotely. Uh, offensive at all i mean okay well then let's move on to the other aspect of this then Uh the video aspect yeah so they took this list yeah and they put it into video yeah and here's here's the shift i i and uh correct me if i'm wrong i'm not very familiar with all the videos that are posted on feminist frequency are they always her so far up until this point yes yes so this is the first one and this is also the first one since the whole giant Gamergate scandal outbreak, correct? Yes. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this Polygon article was kind of written in the beginnings of that as just a way to try to mitigate some of that stuff, but I don't know. So here we are on Rage Select. Mm. This is a video yep. that Jeff approves of, and this is a video without any Sarkeesian or yeah. any other females in it, for that matter, uh-huh. talking about how guys should address these issues. Right. My question is... Do you think that if it was done by women saying this, we would feel the same way about watching this video? I do. You don't think that it would come across as a little bit more attacking rather than we as guys recognize these are issues and we all need to address this together? I mean, I think it's part of the marketing technique that they specifically chose a bunch of guys and a bunch of guys in the industry. I can can only speak for myself. Sure. Um, But... I don't see the thing is that I take issue with some of the things, some of the implications of the things that Anita Sarkeesian takes issue with in her videos, right? Mm-hmm. I don't take issue with hardly any of uh, I, I, There might have been one thing that I was like, eh, but, but by and large, I mean, none of this stuff, none of this stuff. I think that if you want to have an upper tier conversation about the way that the video game industry and its creation um, thinks about. F- ladies, uh, or uh, the, the thing is, I talk with Aaron about this from time to time about people of a different races, right? You know, people of different sexual orientations. I think that's a good conversation to have. Sure. Um, this is more about how you treat women. This is how you treat women. Right? I know. I get that, and that's uh, why I don't have. I don't think that if you had women that came up and they said. If you reverse these things, right, where this, like, number nine here says, I can be sure that my gaming performance, good or bad, won't be attributed to or reflect on my gender as a whole. If you had this video and it was repurposed to say, here are things that women face, and you had a woman who came up and said, "Um, 
it is possible that my gaming performance, good or bad, will be will ref, will be attributed or will reflect on my gender as a whole. I don't think it would be. I don't know. I I don't know, but no, I don't no, think no. I would have an I, issue I guess with it. My my point was that in the aftermath of the whole GamerGate, mm-hmm. I think that as a strategic marketing decision, they decided to have a bunch of guys say this list because. It, it sort of diffuses a little bit of the tension. I think it was a smart choice on their part, mm-hmm. but uh, but I I think that's that's a, a better way for them to kind of ease in it and uh, I want to say the term extend the olive branch, but you know, be able to start communicating with people that have been reticent, the the people that they're obviously trying to target the audience that uh, have been combative toward feminist frequency, but still obviously subscribe because either they. They want to fight it, or um, the, the you know what? Maybe the f- they want to be challenged. But you, I think it, I just think it was a good call. You know, you know the th- the thing that I've come to about Gamergate and about a lot of this stuff after talking with a huge amount of people for a huge amount of time and thinking about this stuff way t- more than people should probably be thinking about it to the point where I'm into. If some anyone's ways, gonna a guy who runs a video game site, obsessive makes sense. about it, you're not gonna change the people who are shitty to Anita Sarkeesian. It's not true. No, uh, it is true. It is not you true. You are not going to change those people. I, I, you are not going to change I them. I fully disagree. I, okay, you're not going to change all of them. Sure, but I think there's plenty of people who bandwagon, who are immature, who just haven't really thought about the issue, who haven't, who haven't had a personal touch to it. I, I mean, there's so many things. If I, I've changed on so many opinions because of of such a small thing, uh, like a weird outreach. A, a certain person phrasing a certain thing that I'm like, wow, yeah. that, that really affected me. And that made me kind of see someone else's perspective and illuminated. it. And I, th- I think that keeping okay. pushing with these campaigns is, is very good. OK, so if, from my perspective, going back, I've been doing this for three plus years now. Mm-hmm. Right. And we have fans that have started uh, that started back on spill and have come all the way through here to rage select with us. Sure. And there are some people on the website who who I disagree with about certain things who I have been kind of making arguments against their general point of view for a long time to know on, on okay, honestly, honestly the way I think that this shit's going to go down is not with m- anybody my age. It's not going to Happen with thirty year olds. No, I mean the, gen- gonna, the next generation. Sixteen year olds are going to get taught this shit early, and that's why this shit is important. Is because they're going to get taught it early, and then they're going to believe it, and and then that's where the change is going to happen. Uh, yeah. I, I I really think that's the case because nobody is talking. I don't see conversations happening about any of this stuff online. I see people yelling their viewpoint at other people yelling their viewpoint back. That's all that seems to be happening. I don't really see people having any kind of conversation. I've had conversations on Twitter. I mean, I've had conversations because I was pretty anti-Gamergate yeah. for a, a multitude of reasons. But I had a lot of people who would challenge me on certain things. And I would at least be able to see their point and be like, okay, I, I, I recognize that you are making this other argument. And for that, I can give you credit and not discount the entirety of what those people that sided with Gamergate at whatever, like, right. what resonated with some people. And it wasn't so black and white as all of you are shitty misogynists. It was like some people getting lumped in with some other people getting lumped in with some sure. other people. And there's a whole bunch of gray area. And I, I recognize that because I had discussions with people. And I, I thought that was worthwhile. And I hope that maybe some of what I said imparted on them as well. And they saw... Some of the futility of siding with an argument that had no leader and no structure and and uh, a bunch of loud voices that were destructive overall to humanity. <sighs> yeah, I ah, dis- grant out. I are disagree. we done with the podcast? I disagree. <laughs> I, I disagree with that. I think th- you know you want to know what I actually think has happened with Gamergate. That something new came along, and uh, and everybody forgot about Gamergate. There wasn't an, a story. It was hot, right, for a while. And, you know, uh, big news sites like, you know, you get Rolling Stone or major well, news outlets. I, I mean, but I, it's, it's, it's gone mostly. Do you think now. it's because of a news, news story or because everyone outright mocked and dismissed it and then it just kind of fizzled? Um, well, I don't think the people that are pro Gamergate feel that it's fizzled. No, they're probably <laughs> still campaigning, but everyone thinks they're a joke now. Um, 
But like, it's not worth the time anymore. There's Ferguson and there's some other shit to talk about now. Right. It's but like, I guess that's that's the thing. You're that's, no longer part of the news cycle. That's the thing that's a little bit dismaying to me is that it was a conversation that was happening, and then it's like, at, and then so it was the conversation that was happening. Major news outlets basically started re- reporting on it as if everybody who was part of GamerGate was the scum of the earth. Yeah. Then it became a joke. Then everybody forgot about it and moved on, and nothing has been, nothing happened. That's the, I guess that's the thing that upsets me about all this stuff is that there were people who were white hot fury on my on my social media feed and in comment sections and stuff and as soon as that uh, that fury never amounted to anything it was just shaking your fist at somebody else and then kind of walking away at the end of it like i don't on feel both sides exactly maybe, it, it's, yeah that's, that's how it is with all of these things we're in we're in a culture of 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 impotent rage and uh constant like media cycle of bullshit it's just whatever's the new hot thing get angry sensationalism right move on to the next thing yeah i and, I, I guess and we want to kind of you know jump on and have an opinion one way or the other because that's part of the, the like the social discourse but at the end of the day you're right in a week it's not gonna fucking matter which which in some ways makes me wonder don't burn all of your bridges everyone which which in <laughs> in some cases makes me wonder why even interact with other people about it in the first place like if you're not even gonna because make any difference and the game companies are just gonna go right back to selling you the exact same games that they've been doing that's that's still part of that weird brave new world that we're still trying to figure out I i'm think, old because- that's what but but i mean like we're we're all in this same boat of suddenly having this uh twitter how old is twitter like five years uh mm. facebook is about like 10 eight years or something like that mm. it's like now suddenly we have access to be able to have a discourse with anyone and everyone right and we still don't know how to do it how to filter it all and keep it reasonable and so it's just a bunch of shouting matches that's all we're left with right now and we're gonna clean it up. We're gonna we're gonna be able to process everything in a more civilized manner. But we're still going through growing pains. I think. Yeah, I don't I don't see any progression towards actually having any meeting and not just shouting at each other you all give the time. It a decade or two, man. Uh, all right. Well, you know what? That is enough of that. Uh, we're gonna move on <laughs> to our next news story. So, um, Grant, I don't know if you know this, no, but I don't know nothing. Um, I'm John Snow. <laughs> the Xbox, right? Mm-hmm. Microsoft Xbox does not do very well in Japan. What? Yeah, like, like, really poorly. Like, it took what did this? Um, I'm, I'm looking at this news story here. It took six years to sell 1.5 million Xbox 360s in Japan. Well, how many people do they have there? Like 1.5 million? Yeah, it's, it's at least 1.5 million, right? So it's one exact- person, every single person bought one. Yes, cool. an Xbox for every man, woman, and child. Success. So uh, <laughs> last week, um, uh, Takashi Sensui, I think something like that, um, uh, resigned as his as the head of Xbox Japan. Um, apparently, the in Xbox shame. Apparently, the Xbox One's launch in Japan um, was kind of terrible. Uh, Xbox One. Managed to move, what, 23,562 units during the first week of September. Um, Are you suggesting conspiracy? No. Like he was in cahoots with uh, PlayStation? No. Okay. I'm asking why the fuck does Xbox, e- why does Microsoft even try this? Like, Japan is Sony and, and uh, a Nintendo Berg, man. Like, they, they, don't, they don't buy Xboxes over there. Yeah, but it's a big video game community. But they don't play Xbox games. They don't play Xbox One games. They play X. They play 360 and they play uh, Sony games. They don't have the right hook, I guess. I guess. Um, I mean, so I don't why, know if it's why just bother spending all that money marketing over there? Right. I yeah, that's kind of what I wonder. Like, I don't think I'd even. I mean, you still have to offer it. Yeah, I and s- if you don't even market at all, there's no awareness. But, <laughs> but yeah, I. I don't know. I have no solution for that, and that sucks. It's a little weird. It's just it's a little weird that they they seem to be. It's a good reminder to me that like when we, a lot of times we talk about U.S. sales numbers for consoles and things like that, and I have to remember that in other parts of the world, like in the U.K., PlayStation's been crazy for years, right? Mm-hmm. And in Japan, PlayStation's been crazy for years. 
is that we talk a lot of times in the U.S. about the console war. We use U.S. sales figures to back up this like 50-50 head-to-head thing. And you but tend to forget. It's bullshit, huh? Sometimes, yeah. So I don't know. Like I said, it was a slow news week. So I pulled it, up a few things. It but happens. Bacon sales are terrible over in Israel. Is it? Bikini <laughs> sales in like Iraq. Forget about it. Um, <laughs> next up, uh, there was a leak. The Uh-oh. next Assassin's Creed game, I'm going to tell you where it's going to be. So if you don't want to know that, skip ahead two minutes. Why wouldn't they want to know? I don't know. I don't know why they would. I don't know why anybody cares about Assassin's Creed <laughs> after <laughs> Unity. But uh, Victorian London next year. Whoa. Yep. Uh, fun, fun. Which does makes me um, go completely and totally meh. Oh, right. Grant is um, unaware of the fact that Assassin's Creed Unity was riddled with bugs. And on Joystick, where I get my uh, news from, the screenshot for this is one of those ones where his face is completely off of the model. It was freaking me the fuck out. I'm like, what am I looking at? Yep. I thought it looked... I thought it looked like a racist caricature on there. From I could back see that. Here. I could see I was that. Like, Jesus. <laughs> yep. Um, but here's the thing. Well, oh, first of all, Ubisoft had a very uh, kind of butthurt, passive aggressive uh, press release where they were like, "Yeah, we're sorry that uh, we couldn't announce this when we wanted to, but yep, that's what's happening, and it's a <laughs> shame when assets get put out there in the world." I guess all uh, those fans of Assassin's Creed, but it was just. It's like when Marvel had uh, that trailer leaked they're like fuck it here's the whole high-res version enjoy right, right. and then uh when they have it leaked they're like Wah. so ubisoft's comment is always unfortunate when internal assets not intended for public consumption are leaked and while we certainly welcome anticipation for all our upcoming titles we're disappointed for our fans and our development team that this conceptual asset is now public fuck you just fucking, all right, listen. Fuck you, Ubisoft. Don't make me feel guilty because it got out there. You know what? I've, I've, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but Ubisoft is not having a good year. And the thing about this announcement that kind of uh, that kind of makes me go, uh, is um, set in Victorian London means... Is that kind of boring? Yes. Um, is that Assassin's Creed Unity pulled a lot of the diversity of terrain out of the Assassin's Creed series by setting the entire game in Paris Mm -hmm. as opposed to... So you look at Assassin's Creed 1 was just... It was in three different cities. Assassin's Creed 2, there were a few multiple cities or very large cities, right? But they were still kind of getting a hold of mechanics. They were adding new things. Assassin's Creed 3... (coughs) Excuse me. They dialed back some of the mechanics, but they had this whole wilderness in in colonial America because it was in the U.S., Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, was on a fucking pirate ship. Like, you were just sailing between islands and shit like that, right? That's kind of cool. Assassin's Creed Unity takes place in Paris. It's just Paris. It's just an urban environment where you have dense streets and tall buildings, right? And a lot to me felt like there were, there were types of weapons and types of gadgets that they had in the previous Assassin's Creed games that worked very well in like the countryside as opposed to the city or the pirate ship or things like that. Yeah. Whereas Assassin's Creed Unity just felt very dull because it was just in a city. It was just a lame-ass remix of a bunch of shit. Well, yeah, it was like they stripped out a lot of stuff, and I don't really know why. So the fact that they're setting this next one in a giant city, especially because at the beginning of Assassin's Creed Unity, they have this screen where you get to select what time period you want to go to. Yeah. I fucking hate this screen so much, Grant. (laughs) Because they've got all the different Assassin's Creed games in there, right? And then they have a few, like there's one that's a jazz era assassin that's wearing like a white suit what? with a hood. There's one that looks like it's like a um, like a modern or something like that. And I'm like, ooh, I want to play those, but it's a it's fake. It makes you pick one, and that's where the whole game goes. And to hear that, they're, are you serious? Yeah, the whole thing is a, is a it's a fake out. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a um, an artifice to make you feel like you're playing an app. That's how the game is framed, is that you are playing this Abstergo app where you're going into these memories, sure. right? And they've got all these other things. Such a dumb premise. Why but they're they all that? locked. I don't know. They're having a really difficult time with all that bullshit. Anyway, um, Assassin's Creed is going to take place in London. Yawn. I mean, like... <laughs> Yawn. I don't know. Hopefully, they'll fix it and not... It won't be fucking the shit mess that Unity was. The longer I get, it should a w- be Assassin's Creed like Caveman era. That'd be fucking cool. Or I mean, you know, uh, the, it's supposed to be DLC for Assassin's Creed Unity. Um, oh, I think they actually Assassin's they, Creed Space Station. Did they cancel all of the DLC? Did that mean that they canceled the 
holy shit, I gotta think. I'm, I'll look at it over the break. Um, there was supposed to be like an Asian, like a ninjas and samurais assassin really? section that was part of, I believe, like the. It was part of the season pass that you bought for Assassin's Creed Unity, but because of the bugs, they canceled all the DLC. And they're offering a free game if you bought the season pass for it. Yeah. I wonder if that shit's still coming out. I need to look mm. that up. Because everybody's been waiting for that for a long time, right? Seems no brainer. Yeah. Assassin's Creed ninjas and shit, right? That, that's what it's called. Assassin's Creed ninjas, ninjas and, and shit. shit. <laughs> all right. Um, what else we got? We have changes to the way that Steam gifts rule or uh, gifts are, are handled. Okay. Uh, this is more of a PSA. In fact, a lot of this shit is just PSAs from this point on. Um, in fact, we've only got a few more news stories and they're kind of garbage. But this is interesting. <laughs> uh, this is something that I just feel like it's one of those informational things to get out there. Steam is going to start putting a 30-day hold on any game, because when you purchase a game on Steam, you can purchase it for yourself, or you can purchase it as a gift. You purchase it as a gift, you can put it in your Steam inventory, and then you can transfer it to somebody later on. So they're making a new rule that says that within 30 days, you can't transfer that game to anybody else. You have to hold it for 30 days before you can gift it or sell it or transfer it to anybody else. Because apparently they have problems with people using fake credit card information to buy a whole bunch of Steam keys and then immediately flip them and resell them for a profit. Meanwhile, their original credit card transaction is then disputed because the card's been stolen or whatever. Ah. So they're going to make you wait for 30 days in order to gain legitimacy to your transaction before you can set that stuff away. Huh. Interesting. Um, not something I was even aware was going on, but I'm sure that there's a lot of shenanigans. Steam nipping it in the bud. You know, for I, all of you guys doing that, you ruined it for the rest of us. I don't even. I've never done that in my no, entire I've career of Steam. Even, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Next up, um, Infinity Blade. This is this is one of those just like Jeff is really excited things, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Infinity Blade is coming to the Xbox One. Infinity Blade Saga is coming to the Xbox One. So, Infinity Blade. There's a there's a company called Chair, right? Chair made a game called. Shadow Complex. Okay. Shadow Complex was an Xbox 360 game that was a Metroidvania game based on the crazy rantings of Orson Scott Card <laughs> that was an incredible video game. Really? It was wonderful. It was a very good game. I love it to pieces, right? Then they left and they started making iPad games, specifically this franchise called Infinity Blade, Infinity Blade, and they were very much touchscreen swiping action games. And I always wanted to play more games they made, but they were iOS only. I've never owned an iOS phone. I've never been able to play them. So I'm actually really excited that they're coming to Xbox One. And they said that you can use the motion controls to kind of simulate swiping. But on that, you can use a controller to actually control it like, you know, a civilized human being. So, you know who's not excited? Who's that? Japan. Japan. Because they don't play <laughs> Xbox One. <laughs> Grant's been paying attention, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I get an A+. Plus. There Yay. you go. Uh, and we have one more story. And I think that this story is incredible. Oh, all right. I thought we only had bullshit left. No, we have one more story, and I saved the best for last. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to I'm going to lay this out for you. I'm not even going to pull it up because I don't want you to see the headline. Oh, that's bullshit. All right. It's a Kickstarter. Okay. From a Canadian medical company. All right. And it's for a device that basically you hook up a uh, a blood draw into your arm, right? Oh, okay. like like you're giving blood, right? All right. And then that that needle is hooked to a machine, and that machine is hooked to your controller. So then you play a video game, and the way that it's set up is every time you get shot, like okay, any time that the controller rumbles, and this usually happens in multiplayer games when you get shot or exploded, uh, right? Okay. It takes a little bit of your blood, and it's basically <laughs> it's a Kickstarter. <laughs> For a fun for way, for a for, for a fun way, for people to give their blood while playing video games, and apparently the shittier you are at video games, the less blood you have when you get done or I whatever. Would die. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> Kickstarter has suspended this Kickstarter. <laughs> wow, and really? they're not and they're not able to do it right now. Okay, so yeah. it was it was for like at a blood bank. This it would, would be it, operated by while someone's monitoring. What? Yeah. what okay. What? It, what they looked like they were wanting to do is take this around to like 
public gaming events and set up like a little side section where they're like, hey, do you want to donate give blood, blood while you're doing this video game? It'll be a fun thing for everybody. And they're going to have a med tech on hand. Yeah. It's not going to be like, I'm just sitting here in my house filling up jars of blood for no reason. They'd be like, Jesus Christ, this kid's really fucking good. Right. He's given no blood. <laughs> He's actually taking blood from other people. Quick, like, fuck with his controller. That's right. Fuck with his controller so he dies. <laughs> Just unplug his controller so yeah. that he gets shot. I don't know. There's a glitch in the game. Weird. Oh, more blood. Thank you. But I, I okay, I, you know, we talked before about all this stuff. I love the age in which we live because we've got shit like a crowdfunded blood drawing controller thing. And the, the picture on their Kickstarter is like this guy with a with the IV hooked up playing <laughs> he looks a game. He's so happy. And he's just like, yeah, man, I'm playing a video game. Woo! <laughs> it's uh, not started yet. Yeah. If he's that happy. Uh, so that's oh, man. pretty interesting. Uh, they need to go through it's some other third party. I want to see this actually. You need to go to Indiegogo or it's something so like that. It's so absurd. Yep. Vampires. It's just a <laughs> vampiric plot. <laughs> Fucking. You get lightheaded because you died too many times at Halo. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, you know, I'm like I said, I'm sure they wouldn't let you just do this infinitely without a nurse standing there going like, okay, we're going to unhook you now because otherwise, you know, I'm a, I'm a gamer. If somebody hooked that shit up to me and I was playing a really good game, I could see letting too much blood come out of me because I wasn't paying <laughs> enough attention. emaciated corpse. Yeah, just as like I've been I'm squeezed out from the inside. <laughs> ah, put the blood back! <laughs> oh. You're the crib keeper. That's right. That's right. Tales from the crib. All right, folks. Well, with that, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we are going to answer y'all's questions that you have been so lovely to send us about video games. we got a ton of questions this week, Grant. Awesome. I asked for questions, so we got a lot of them. So we may get to all of them. We only make it to some of them. I usually try to keep these in and about two hours at maximum. So okay. uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more questions, email show. Bye. Hot dogs. Armor hot dogs. What kind of kids like armor hot dogs? Fat kids, skinny kids, kids who climb on rocks, tough kids, sissy kids, even kids with chicken pox, so oh, hot dogs. Armor hot dogs. They're the dogs kids love to bite. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Back in black. Ba- is that we are? We're okay. Yeah, all back right, in gray and blue. That, that's, 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 that's fairly <laughs> accurate. Hey, but before we get to the emails, I just want to talk to you guys about something real fast. So listen, um, we just did our processing for you, for the patrons here uh, for November, and it appears that there were a few people on that list who I don't know if it's directly related to Jason uh, not being on as much anymore. It's the end of the year. Jason left. Could it, be the end of the year. Bunch of things. Could be whatever. I don't know. This is just you know. This is a few days after this has happened, but we did kind of take a a, a bit of a hit where our numbers are down around a quarter. Um, so I just wanted to say that like, hey, we don't you know I try not to whenever possible grant like. We don't put Squarespace at the beginning, <laughs> middle, and end of every one of these things or audible.com this or any of that true. bullshit, right? Like, I kind of try to keep the ads to a minimum on YouTube. We don't do mid-roll ads or anything like that. And I'm, I don't want it to sound like I'm coming out here and threatening people with like, hey, you know what? We're going to start rolling ads every 10 seconds. We're not going to do that. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to ask everybody that if you're not already a patron, I'd like you to consider it uh, because basically... Patreon is what pays all of our bills. And for those of you who don't know how it works, I go over it at the end of every video, but I'm sure that you guys is just white noise by now, right? Mm -hmm. But basically, uh, six days out of every week, we post a video to Patreon. And what you do is you go there and you sign up and you say, hey, I'm going to give you guys a buck for every video that you put out, right? And then you can set a cap, right? I had somebody who emailed me who wasn't sure about this. So they yeah. said, I want to post a dollar for every video that you guys put out. And let's see, I don't want to spend more than $5 this month. So I'm going to put the cap at $5. So then the first five videos that we post, you essentially pledge to, uh, to, to donate a dollar to us for each one of those videos. And then at the end of every month, at the, at the, the, the first of every month is when these things happen. Uh, Patreon basically charges your credit card five bucks. And then we get, they take a piece for a credit card. And then we, um, we get the rest of it, and that is what is allow. That's what allows us to essentially pay for games, equipment, salaries. When I'm able to pay other people, uh, all that stuff is basically Patreon. Our but but now, I mean, uh, about a quarter of a percent drop. 
That that is a uh, well, quite a a, a hit. Tw- 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 like, a little over twenty percent. So okay, uh, yeah, but but, that, but that's still substantial to the point where it's like it means R- that Rich like could use your help, guys. Right, and if if you guys are donating just like a, a little bit on Patreon. Maybe consider upping that. I mean, here's the here's the thing that I recommend to everybody, and I I don't think I recommended it in the video. We really I've been saying for a year, for eight months, we need to redo that Patreon video. Yeah, because we know way more now than we did before. Because that was just very much a hail mary when it looked like we were just going to be out of funds. But sure. here's the thing: is that I know that there's a lot of people out there who will try to only they'll try to donate like fifty cents per video because they don't want to donate a huge amount of money and they don't know how many videos we post in a month. It's way better to just post, to, to pledge whatever you want to post in a month. Like if you want to give us $5 a month, just say, I'm going to give you $5 a video with a $5 cap. And then the first time, boom, five dollars, the whole thing. That's all it is. Straightforward. Right? Yeah. Instead of trying to say like, well, you guys put out twenty eight videos, and I want to donate around five dollars, and then I'm going to donate you, uh, fifty it, cents even, per video. Even so or, you're going to still get the bonus content that we do. That's correct. That's correct. And we do. Yeah, we do offer. We've got two sequential playthroughs going on right now, and then um, Aaron and I basically we've been bopping around to different games every single week, and we're keeping that stuff up. We've got a huge backlog of videos that you can totally see. Um, including Grant and I playing all the way through what both Asura's Wrath and The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. John and I played all the way through Dark Souls too. There's a lot of content there. When I look at the list, I don't even like to look at it anymore because it's a little. Mm. But um, honestly, I don't want to push this point too hard, so I'm going to wrap it up. And I'm just going to say, if you're not a patron, I'd like you to consider it um, because the more that we're able to bring in via Patreon, the more flexibility we have as far as the games that we show. And the better I am able to pay the lovely people who are on this show. Um, so think about it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, you're know you more than willing to send me an email, and I'll, I'll let you know. So with that, we're going to get to the emails. Thanks, guys. Let's move on to the emails. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. I don't want to harp on this for too long. Mail at RageSelect.com is the email address that is mail at RageSelect.com. And we have a bunch of emails this week. So we're going to try to, we're gonna try to zip. Zip on through them. Let's do them. Tangy zip of uh, email whip. Yes or no answers. That's all we get. Unfortunately, I've got a bunch of really long questions. All right. (laughs) This one, the first one comes in from Evan. Evan says, hey, Jeff and Grant, is it just me or has this year been more? Okay. Is it just me or has this year just been way more missed than hit for games? I trust your Let's Plays and podcasts here on Rage Select and on Giant Bomb quite a bit. And it seems I literally have no reason to get a next generation console as of yet. Destiny tripped over itself. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity seems just as frustrating a uh, time as Assassin's Creed 1. Master Chief Collection still have all those games, don't care. I have yet to even play Far Cry 3. Metal Gear Solid Ground Zero is basically a demo. Played it on friend X-Bone. And motherfucking Drive Club is broken as fuck. Uh, seriously, other than the interest in Shadow of Mordor, uh, the most likely thing uh, is for me to get my own Wii U and play Super Smash Brothers to the end of times. But I already have three <laughs> friends who have the console, the game, and plenty of controllers between us. The only games I played in 2014 were Telltale's Walking Dead, Last of Us, and Skyrim, all of which for the first time, which came out last year or before. A few indies on Steam and a shit ton of Super Smash Brothers over the summer in preparation. What do you guys think? Is it a crap year for games overall? Would I be better off at this stage in my life, 23 years old, investing in a cheap PC since I know the console's uh, I get will be Nintendo anyway. Who knows? Maybe I'll cave when Phantom Pain comes out and get a PS4 bundle. Thank you, sexy whiskey priest. Yada yada, stay classy. Yada yada, dong lord. Yada yada, former Spilio Evan. Ooh, boom. Yep. Um, Starting off big. Has it been a bad year for video games? Uh, well, he seems to be asking more. Has it been uh, a bad year for PS4 for and PS4 consoles. and Xbox One? Yeah, yeah. I look at the blue over there, which represents all the PlayStation 4 games that I have bought this year, and I would say um, I see where he's coming from. Is yeah. there have been less huge high points this year? Like, I don't know that I can think of a game. I haven't played through all of Dragon Age yet uh, because I was going to play Far Cry 4, but. A lot of the games I feel like this year that we thought were going to just be absolutely mind blowing have been a little meh, and then some games like Shadow of Mordor and uh, Wolfenstein that I thought were going to be meh have been pretty mind blowing. But I don't know if I can think of a game this year that was a lot like, like I definitely can't think of anything like Skyrim. Dark Souls Two came out this year. I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> um, which is I don't a, know how you could ever forget about that. I I just 
I played so much of it this year, and my track record with those games is that I play them, I beat them, and then two years later I come back to them, that I can't believe it came out this year because I've played so goddamn much of it. Um, but yeah, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything like uh, The Last of Us or um, Bioshock Infinite. Or I mean, you, you seem know, to have a great time with like Far Cry 4. Do you think it's, it's still not... That mm-hmm. echelon, though, right? The Far Cry Four is good. It's just a, it's just more Far Cry. It's a, it's more of the last game, and it's been refined. And it's I think it's got a better story than Far Cry Three. I think it's got some interesting new mechanics, but it's not radically different in any way, shape, so, or form. So there's been no real game that stands out to you that you're like, you need to get this console. You need to get like the PS4 just for the graphics alone because it is mind blowing. The only game that could fit into that category right now for me would probably be well. See, the other problem is that you start also having to think about games that have come out on other consoles, right? Because I believe Wolfenstein: The New Order and oh, well, okay, Shadow of Mordor um, is it, they had to remove parts of it for the Xbox 360 and PS3 launch because it's too complicated there's a mm. nemesis system they had to take out um it's just you know it like last year when gta 5 came out and everybody was just fucking talking about gta 5 it was just yeah. gta 5 gta 5 um i don't feel like there's been a game like that this year and there hasn't been a last of us that people are like just their socks are blown the fuck off right yeah it's like ah um i think that next year is shaping up to look pretty good especially with things like bloodborne and uncharted 4 is supposed to be coming out next year and um, I think that next year is going to be way big. I think that what we, I think where we're at is that awkward year because the PlayStation Four and the Xbox One launched last year at holiday season. So this has been a year of developers transitioning and new properties being announced, but not necessarily out there. Yeah, um, like some people already have contracts in place, games ready to go, so that they're like, okay, we're going to be able to transition this, bump up the graphics, and release this within the same year that that came out. And then others are like, ah, actually, our window, if we want to start development, we're going to have to move it another year and a half down the line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're at the beginning of the development cycle for the new consoles. So if you if you think about like the first eight months of the PS3, mm-hmm. I don't really know about the 360 because I didn't have one, but I understand it was kind of similar. It was kind of a wasteland, right? Of of Especially the PlayStation 3. I had my PlayStation 3 for like nine months before there was anything that was not a crappy port of a different game sure. worth playing on it. So you would recommend then that he go ahead and invest in one? Um the thing is that it sounds like he's it sounds like he's pretty contented with his gaming setup. I would say hold, yeah, hold on. You can always buy it later when you see that there's a one hook game at least. I tell you what though, there was a hell of a deal uh on Amazon. I don't know if it's still going on for Xbox Ones. It was an Xbox One with like Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Unity, but it was like three twenty five or three thirty or something, which is um, you know, they they dropped the price to three fifty for the holidays mm-hmm. and there was an additional thirty bucks with two games off of that. Granted, I don't think I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that I didn't care for Assassin's Creed Unity, obviously. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But Black Flag is fantastic on the next gen consoles. Um but no, I mean I've always said whenever this question kind of comes up, I think that in general when I just I look back at all of this year there have been some interesting things. I don't know that anything has really caught the zeitgeist the way that a lot of things did last, last year. Of or, yeah. Right. Uh, so I, I anticipate there's going to be a recap of 2014 podcast in the coming weeks. Yes. Um, and so that would probably even more encompass uh, the broader question of, what you overall think of the games. I think that I'm going to have... I think I'm going to try to have one with Aaron, because Aaron has played a f- quite a few games this year. Uh-huh. I think I'm going to have one with Jason, even though he hasn't gotten a chance to play a shit ton of stuff this year. Um, I'm probably not going to have one with you, Grant. I'm sorry, but... What? D- yeah, you tell me... This is, you tell me now on, <laughs> on microphone? On microphone? Why, why are you this doing this? So you don't make a scene. So you don't make a scene. <laughs> so this is this a scene? Grant I'm making a scene, scene now! Blowing out the mic. <laughs> yeah. Fun. So, what was your game of the year this year? Grant? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I didn't play really pay attention. To uh, games anyway, games. we are going to be going over best of. I don't think I'm going to have enough games to put a worst of together. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, I mean, a lot of this year, like I, I was playing today. I was playing GTA Five on the PlayStation Four. Uh-huh. Looks fantastic. Looks fucking phenomenal. I saw it. it. Looks gorgeous. Yeah. But that game's available on the PlayStation Three, and there's not a 
shit ton of difference between the two of them. Yeah. But it does look significantly better on the PS4. So I think that right now is, if you're just looking at graphical fidelity, that's the reason right now. I think that by by mid-year next year, yeah, uh, it's going to be a no-brainer. You're going to want to have one. You're going to have stuff like Bloodborne that's coming out. You're going to have stuff like... Uh, uh, um, uh, Batman should be out by then. You're gonna have stuff that you're probably gonna want to play it on the next gen console. So, I mean, there's actually a pretty decent bundle right now that they're offering for the PS4 over the holidays. I hate to now I am shilling now. Squarespace, <laughs> you know, a better internet <laughs> starts with no. Um, they have a PS4 bundle that is three ninety nine for a PlayStation Four and The Last of Us Remastered and GTA Five on the PS4 and Akiba's Trip, right? Yeah, and Akiba's no, it doesn't have Akiba's <laughs> Trip. Awesome. Uh, but no, that's a, that's a good deal. Those are two solid games that'll keep you going for a long time, right? Yeah. The Last of Us Remaster, which you and I have played, or no, no, I played it with Aaron. We, I don't we never think, actually you, played that. You've never seen we it. We played before. all the way through the regular one, right? We we beat it like the week before on our secret Patreon. We played. We beat it like the week before it came out on the PS4 or something like that. But um, and Grand Theft Auto Five is a huge game, and especially if you haven't played Grand Theft Auto Five, I feel like playing it on those next gen consoles first would be great. But yes, to answer his question, it has been kind of more missed than hit this year for video games. Thanks, Evan. Yep. Next one comes in from... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, Grant. I forgot. Depth, obviously, is game of the year. The best game I've ever played. <laughs> Most fantastic experience of all time. What the fuck? How could Death I forget about awesome. Death? Anyway. Uh, all right. This next one comes in from Sun. Sun says, Dear Jeff and Grant. Hey, Jeff. This one's for me. This is a little Jeff jabbing, so, but That's I want to talk about it. Hey, Jeff. Before you played Super Smash Brothers for the dojo and loved the game, you were adamant that you were going to hate it. Are there any other games that you felt the same? P.S. Does your parents get on you for not being married? And signed, sent from my iPhone. No, signed, uh, <laughs> son. Um, all right, so I'm going to answer the second question first to say my parents don't really give me static for not being married. So I don't know. All right. Um, but as far as the Smash Brothers things goes, okay. Grant, as a fellow podcaster, I don't know how you... I don't know. Let me pick your brain for a second. I could not tell you what I've said over the years. I talk constantly, and I could probably tell you what we talked about in part one of the podcast today, but before we recorded this podcast, we recorded Game of Thrones. I don't think I could tell you much of what I talked the, about, ye, maybe a little bit. This happens all the time to us, where it's like, yeah. you said this in episode five, part two at right. minute 49, and I'm like, huh, So oh, fuck, I guess I did. I so know. here's the thing. I don't think that I ever said that I was staunchly opposed to Smash Brothers. I'm pretty sure that what I've said previously when we were coming, we're running up to Smash Brothers, right, is I haven't ever played Smash Brothers before. I've never been really very interested in it before, but I'm looking forward to this new one. I'd like to give it a shot. Now, in... That generally sounds like what you would say. And you've translated that into internet speak. That means, I hate it! Oh, fuck it! Fuck it in its ass! What's wrong with you, That's Jeff? Right. Um, so the thing is that I, um, I, did, I do like the new one. I mean, I think it's really fun. We played it on Sunday Streaming with four of us here. It's a cool game. It was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have anything necessarily against any of the previous Smash Brothers. I just never played them. Yeah. Right? I didn't have an N64, and on the GameCube, there was, a time, there was a time back in the PlayStation 1 era, right, where I wanted to play edgy, adult-oriented video games, right? And I'm not ashamed to say that you look at Smash Brothers and you've got fucking Mario punching Pikachu in the face. And you're just like, okay, I'm going to go over here to the Blood Games. I'm going to play some more Grand Theft Auto. Shoot some people in the face. I'm going to shoot some people in the face. I'm going to beat a hooker to death with a baseball bat. That's what I'm into in my video game. Um, but no, there was a time, and, and I've kind of begrudgingly come around to the fact that most of the Nintendo games that have come out in the last year and a half have been really fun. I don't yeah. necessarily. I'm not really super interested in playing a shitload of Mario Kart, but when I play Mario Kart, it's fine. It's great. It's a really fun game. It's full of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Smash Brothers is fun, and so the thing is that if I did say that on a previous podcast, it may have been a long previous podcast. I don't remember it, but I try to give everything a fair shake. But the big thing about like what what changed him, yeah, is actually playing the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is that I try really hard these days. I've gotten trapped a number of different times. I try very hard not to 
judge games until I played them, mm. and I played them for an extended period of time. Um, but as far as his question about are there other games that you felt the same with, absolutely. Uh, I can't. There's been plenty of games out there that I've written off. Like that's gonna be garbage. Depth. Yeah, depth. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I'll tell you what. I named two of them. Right. Two of my favorite games this year have been Wolfenstein: The New Order and Shadow of Mordor. And Wolfenstein is a franchise that I feel has been a little bit abused. And suddenly, this game came out. And I was just like, God damn, this is really fun. And I did. I didn't. I didn't. Generally speaking, I don't generally tend to say that game's gonna be shit. But what I do is I go, I don't know, let's see. And meanwhile, everybody else is just like, oh, my God. And so I'm like a big party pooper, right? Because I'm just like, guys, maybe we should just wait and see. I don't know. Maybe it could be good. Maybe not. Who knows? And it's like, ah, fuck you. I'm riding the high of this Watch Dogs trailer. Like, fuck you. It's going to be great. Um, but it happens. And, and Shadow of Mordor is traditionally the Lord of the Rings has been kind of a dumping ground for mediocre games that have been trading on the title, the, mm-hmm. the name Lord of the Rings, right? A lot of franchises do that. Yeah. And Shadow of Mordor was great. It was fucking, it was a wonderful game. I had a, such a good time, start to finish. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's totally happened to me before. I, I still have expectations. I try not to, anymore, I try not to slop too much of my expectations around onto other people. Sure. Uh, just because... People take a lot of enjoyment in making you eat your words. So if you say something's going to be bad, you better be goddamn well sure it's going to be bad. Like that new Star Wars movie, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be shit. It's going to be garbage. It's going to be worse than The Phantom Menace. Oh, I'm going to make you eat I'm your going words on record on right now. J.J. Abrams is a child molester, and I'm not watching a movie, but no, I'm, no none of this is true. None Whoa. of this is true. None of this is true. No, Too late, I already stopped the clip. Is that it? I stopped the recording before okay. you said that part. Good, good. So you can now excise that one part uh-huh. and just like, uh, yeah, <laughs> please don't do that. Next question. Thanks for the question, buddy. Next question comes in from William Valley. Um, and he says, hi, Jeff. I saw your plea for questions. I don't know there was a plea. I don't know. What you were on. desperate. I was crying at the time. <laughs> um, I thought I'd, and this is, uh, I actually got this grant for you. I pulled this question just for you. Aw. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd ask about the show Gotham and what you thought of it. I personally love it. I went in thinking it would be terrible, but it's a lot better than I even expected it could be. Have you seen it? If so, what are your thoughts? Also, I think the rapport between you and Grant is getting super strong. I look forward to episodes of the two of you together just as much as I did you and Jason. Aww. Keep the, keeping the dong strong, a will. Um, that was very kind. That's very Thanks, kind. Will. So I picked this one because you're a TV dude, and I have not seen Gotham because I'm kind of sick of Batman. So I kind of wish of of the shows you pay, uh, you could have picked. Yeah, it wasn't Gotham. It wasn't Gotham. Uh, I take it you're not enjoying it. Are you watching no. it? Did you have you seen no, no, all? No, I've it? seen the first like three or four episodes, mm. and I was kind of meh about it. The thing is, I have heard that it is dramatically improved in about uh, episode seven or eight. Okay. But I, it's just still sitting on my DVR. And then I heard that was, there was another drop off after that. I th- this is just kind of me hearing things from other people. I I was disappointed with the beginning part. Kay. I think that it was a little bit too campy, a little bit too soap opera. I don't know. It seemed a little, it seemed like C like Fox was doing CW. Okay. But, <laughs> I don't know. But see, you I, like... I wasn't into it. I guess as a question here is that um, you like The Flash, though, right? The Flash is great. So, But The Flash is very kind of soap opera. The opera-y Flash is very CW. soap opera in CW. So what's the difference between that and Gotham? Is it, Do you expect Batman to be dark, that, that, that universe to be more dark and serious than The Flash's universe? Than The Flash's storylines? Because, you know, they're both you know they're both DC characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Gotham answer your for yourself Grant. <laughs> Gotham I think already did itself a disservice at the start by trying to do Gotham before Batman okay. before what's interesting about it it's that whole Patton Oswald bit already yeah it's like oh do you like Angelina Jolie here's John Voight's testicle oh right that whole thing yeah, okay um but in, in addition they kind of retcon the whole uh that's not the right term, but they kind of reshaped the whole mythology to have all these villain kids popping up. Like, oh, here's Riddler before he's Riddler. Here's Penguin right. before he's Penguin. And they here's all have Poison Ivy of, making like, a cameo. And it's relationships. Like, yeah, it's like everyone is just kind of crossing paths left and right. And it's just, it's 
hokey. It's corny in that regard. They're doing villain of the week. And I, I, at least when I was seeing it, I wasn't seeing any big draw of, of a season arc. There's one actor who I thought was really bringing it. And that's the guy who's actually playing the penguin. Uh He's really fucking good. Yeah. And, uh, I'm fascinated with how he could develop the penguin arc, Mm -hmm. but otherwise everything was just kind of ham fisted cornball in the first few episodes. Hmm. So that's why I mean, is there any vector that you see there for them introducing Batman? Well, I mean, Bruce Wayne exists in the world. Right. He's a little kid, and his, in the first episode, his parents die, and that's sort of the catalyst for all of Gotham falling apart like this, and Jim Gordon kind of coming in as a cop paired with uh, Donald Logue's, uh, whatever that... Harvey the, Bullock? Harvey Bullock character. So wait, yeah, they're yeah. not even doing the commissioner before him arc? Is he no, already no, no. police commissioner? And in fact, uh, his his love interest from like Batman Year One Essen? Is actually, yeah, Essen, she's yeah. actually his boss. Okay. Like a much older lady boss. Huh. So I'm like, is that still going to be his love interest? Because it seems like, I mean, when you look at year one, it seems like you could have made, you could have made, I'll tell you what you needed to do is you needed to make, Go- you call it Gotham, mm-hmm. but essentially just make a cop drama. That's it should have been ju- City, yeah. That's all it should have been. Where twice a season you maybe saw something that was somewhat bat related. That that's kind of what I was hoping for. Yeah. But instead, it seems like it it was so desperate to kind of throw in references. I almost feel like Fox uh, like overhead was like, uh, this this needs more Batman references all over the place. Right. You need constant Batman references to keep this kind of relevant and keep the audience interested. Mm-hmm. And for me, I was just like, ah, oh, stop doing that because. You're you're throwing off the weight of any situation because you're just bullshitting stuff in. You're cramming it in. Mm-hmm. Eh. Uh, I, but then again, so not a fan. <laughs> not right now. Not a fan of what I was seeing initially. But William, if, if you're liking it, I did hear it gets a lot better. And I I would assume you have seen that that gradual change and improvement in uh, the plot. Yeah, I'm interested to check it out. Maybe during this winter break. Okay. Cool. Thanks for the question. All right. Well, speaking of comics, we have another comic book related question. Dope. Yep. This one comes in from Marcus. Marcus says, Hey, Jeff and Grant. Quick question. With Marvel's Phase 2 movies coming to uh, an end, what do you think of Phase 2 in comparison to Phase 1? Is it better than Phase 1, worse, or just more of the same? Keep raging on. A Marcus. I'm going to say everybody's name's like Strong Bad uh, at the end from now. So. What marked phase one was Avengers number one, right? It, well, it was Iron Man one and two, I guess. Okay. Captain America, Thor, Thor, and then Avengers. And I guess that when they sold that box set, they threw the Ed Norton Hulk in there because it's kind of tangentially <laughs> okay. related, even though it's not really related. So but. on part two, we got Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh-huh. We got Thor, th- uh, Thor 2. 2. Mm-hmm. We got a Winter Soldier mm-hmm. and Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. Is that it? And, and then I think Avengers 2 will technically, that'll be the end of phase two, right? Oh, man. So it's a toss-up. I mean, Thor 2... And Iron Man 3, eh. Winter Soldier, though, fuck yeah. Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, man, two hit, two miss. Well, I mean, maybe it's a little too harsh to say miss for like Iron Man 3, at least, for me. Yeah. Um, oh, and technically, I guess the upcoming Ant-Man is going to be part of Phase 2. Oh. That's going to be after Age... Well, okay. This is the Marvel Cinematic Universe.wikia.com. This is oh, maybe yeah. not exactly the 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 most uh, 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 ironclad. But Ant-Man would be considered part of Phase 2. I think so. Interesting. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I feel that a lot of credit is due to phase one for putting all the building blocks in place. Yeah. And I I think that it's a lot easier to have something established and then be able to uh, continue to climb and build off of that, which phase two is able to do. But to be able to do the initial world building for Thor, you had to introduce an entire, like, fantasy magical realm into this already established world mm-hmm. that's already a great feat um bringing a 
uh, time transitioning character like Captain America into the modern era. That's amazing. Kicking everything off with Iron Man and making Iron Man one of the, the prior to this whole thing, uh, uh, sort of a, a lesser character to the other ones, making him the, the leader of the pack. Also fucking amazing. I mean, it, it's a lot they did. I disagree. Oh, yeah? You think origin stories are easier? Yes. I think origin stories are way easy because um, they're... When you look at the the track record for... Uh, I mean, I'm not even just going to say comic book movies, but most movies, right? Origin stories are great because you're introducing some th- somebody to something new. So everything you put on the screen is new, right? You All of uh, the World War II iconography and the... And I love all the Phase 1 movies. I'm not going to say that they were bad. I mean... Uh, um, T- okay, technically speaking, in here they're putting Iron Man one and two and the Incredible Hulk in there. Uh, yeah. I think Iron Man two is messy. I don't really like Thor all that much. I don't really care for Thor two all that much. I mean, we've talked about that I care before. For Thor two less than <laughs> Thor one at least. Um, but the but the thing is that Iron I thought that Iron Man three, especially being the third Iron Man, mm-hmm. was. I mean, I liked Iron Man three. I didn't necessarily like it as much when I first saw it. But then when I went back and watched it a few more times, I really started to fall more in love with it than I did the first time I around. never had an issue with the fact that he was out of the suit for yep. over half the movie. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, I, I just liked it because, you know, he, he's already established. I, I thought there was great playful banter, which I guess credit a lot of that to uh, Shane Black. I mean, I guess uh, Guardians is an origin story, so there's that yeah. to, to rely on. I don't know. You know what? I, I think that I mm, I think that I just enjoyed more of the film's more in the phase two than I did in phase one. I it, feel like I part yeah. of it's going to depend on Age of Ultron and Ant Man because I don't think I can judge. I mean, you're just like you're judging 100 percent of phase one against 75 percent of phase two, right? I, so. I guess overall, my my point was like phase one, everything needed to hit. Right. Phase two, it's okay. F- there's there's room for failure. And it's already fast tracked. The whole the the engine's moving, so th- they they have that leeway. Um, however, I guess that also gave them a little bit of a boost of confidence, so they're able to take it a little bit more of an adventurous risk with something like Guardians of the Galaxy and surprise everyone. And I think Guardians of the Galaxy is, is a another game changer for the whole franchise because now they can introduce all sorts of other characters and know that they. They have a fan base on board for anything they do. Oh, geez, I don't think I've looked at the Phase 3 listings until now. You see how hefty it is? I see that that the Avengers movies after Avengers Age of Ultron are going to be in two parts. That yeah, The yeah, next yeah. one's going to be divided. Infinity Gauntlet Part 1 and Part 2. Um, or Infinity War, I think it's called, right? Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. It, no, I, I don't know. I, just, I generally enjoyed the creativity of Phase 2, and I always like to see where where they take the second movie in a hero franchise because like Winter Soldier um, was a great place to take the Captain America franchise. I feel like Winter Sol I feel like Captain America had a lot of room to die on its feet. Like that without the way that they did that movie, I, that there were a lot of different there were a lot of versions of Captain America 2 that were going to be terrible. That were mm-hmm. just going to be I don't know. I don't even know what, but I really liked what they ended up doing. And you know what? You also bring up a great point with that because Winter Soldier is the entire reason why Agents of Shield is even still functioning on TV. I think. <laughs> I think it completely saved that franchise and also validated the expansion of more television um, shows that are going to be popping up on Netflix, like uh, Daredevil and uh, yeah. the whole Defenders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I don't know. So don't know. phase two, uh, I'll, I'll go with phase yeah, two as I'll well. Phase two. Plus, I I I really, really like Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> I, a lot. I know you do. I really, really like that movie it's, a it'll lot. It'll be so exciting to th- see what Avengers two does. I didn't even realize this, but did you know that the um um uh did are you familiar with the band that sings the song that that they put the titles over um that hey hey. What's the matter with you? Do you uh, what, what band is that? I don't know. Uh, Come and Get Your Love, I think is the oh, name yeah, of the song. Oh, yeah, okay. So Come do you, and Get Your Love. So you might have heard that song before, but have you ever looked at the music video for it? Uh-uh. Do you know anything about the band? Um, I was I was drunk, uh, and I came home from the bar, and I was um, uh, I was looking up 
things on YouTube, and I started watching Come and Get Your Love. Come and Get Your Love is interesting because they're from this band called Redbone that was a primarily Native American and Mexican American rock band. It's like really interesting. Like when you look at the the um, when you look at the costumes and stuff that they wear, they're really I, I think like they f- kind of fall in a similar mindset to um, to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, no, to oh. qu- question mark and the Mysterians of of that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's very interesting. I don't know if I'd ever been familiar with them before, and I'm really only familiar with them now because of the being on that soundtrack. Oh, so. I, I've heard that song before. Yeah. Well, I have too, but I've I never just didn't know about Redbone. Never watched the video, so the let's check it out. You know. Um, all right, this next one comes in from Clayton. Clayton says, "Dear Jeff and Grant, I recently saw the new Batman Arkham Knight trailer, and I'm doing my best not to get excited. So far, all the trailers make me okay. So far, all the trailers make me do is wonder if they delayed the game to build hype." When Rock City showed up at E3, the stuff they showed and talked about only made me think that the game was done and they're not actually doing much more to the game. Hype, in my opinion, is different than regular marketing and is bad for anything. It allows fans to build up an expectation of what the game is and what and when the game comes out, fans then hate what they got. It'd be great. It could be a great game, but not as great as the one the fans made in their heads. An example would be Watch Dogs. Ubisoft kept delaying the game while building up hype for the game. And as you and Jason mentioned in the review, it wasn't the game that you were expecting. Even though it was a decent game, it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. Uh, it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. Another good example is Tomb Raider Underworld. It was pushed back to hype the game and turned out to be terrible. What are your thoughts? I hope that I'm wrong and Rocksteady was actually making improvements to Arkham Knight so that the game is the greatest game that it possibly can be. Keep up the great work and always watch out for asshole Spider-Man, Clayton S. Um, so Clayton, I think that his question is interesting because it uh, it brings up the opposite side of a question that we answered on uh, one of our Patreon playthroughs and that uh, uh, Nick and I talked last week on the podcast about, which is releasing an unfinished game with a huge day one patch. Mm-hmm. So uh, one of the things that you can do when you delay a game is you can uh, you can basically polish it way more than you can before. But honestly, I think that um, if I remember, I'm trying to find when it was... okay. Uh, full nine months after it's originally planned October release. So it's supposed to be out October of this year, and it was pushed to June, June. 2nd of next year. So <sighs> so they they claimed that it was already pretty much done. Well, he's claiming that so they, it was already pretty much done. But see, the thing is that I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Like, they showed a very good vertical slice of gameplay, mm-hmm. but... You never, are, you can never be sure in that. Like I've, I've heard reports from a number of different game journalists where they get their hands on a game that's a directed demo where somebody is doing it, and then they get their hands on the controller. And if you turn too far in one direction, like there's no world over there because you need to keep the Ew. camera pointed this way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's also the question of when they show demos. A lot of times they're running on high end PCs because the game hasn't been optimized for you know mid range PCs or consoles or things like that yet. So that the game may be feature complete, but it may not have optimization. It may have bugs that haven't been worked out yet and things like that. I would think there's also an issue with the date of release, like how flexible the calendar schedule is for that. Mm -hmm. It's not like they can go, oh, actually, we just need like three more weeks. It's like, oh, if we're going to change this date, that means that the next available slot is not going to be until flip, 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 flip. Uh, June. Okay, we're gonna try and do summertime because at least summertime is another good big big push m- marketing wise for the the size of this game. That is actually an excellent point because the thing is that if it if it need, needed two more weeks to go to cert in October, that would have pushed it in November. As I'm sure everybody's tired of hearing from me, this November has been fucking just like game 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 get like. Big game after big game after big game is releasing. You've got Far Cry 4. You've got Smash Brothers. You've got Dragon Age. I mean, they specifically coordinate these to uh, go up against other types of games or avoid going up against certain types of games. Right. And I think that there was a... There was a, a good there was a good release window for them in October when there wasn't a whole hell of a lot happening right before, before the big push happened over the holidays uh, that would have worked quite well for them. But I don't know. I mean, if you have a game like even Arkham Knight, you don't want to put that shit up against Call of Duty and two Assassin's Creed games and Dragon Age 
and Grand Theft Auto Five for it next year. It gets lost and, in the muddle. And, and I mean, yeah, and Smash Brothers and Bayonetta two and blah 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 blah. I could keep going on. Yeah, you, you know? want like, it to have its own limelight, right? So I actually think that okay, one. I can't tell. Uh, you assume that because the builds you've seen of the game seem to be complete, that the game was itself is complete. I don't think that's a good assumption. I think that that they well, always. I thought he was also claiming that they said it was pretty much done in their their marketing pitch. Rock, rock, whatever. Rock, rock steady. steady? Um, well, he says, when Rocksteady showed up at E3, the stuff they showed and talked about only made me think that the game was done, and they're oh. not actually doing much more to gotcha, it. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I think that um, I think if they plan to release in October, they're probably feature complete, right? So when you go from alpha to beta, I believe that's when you go feature complete. So there's not adding additional features into the game, right? Yeah. So then it's a matter of building the world and building the stuff that you've already got sketched out, and then once it uh, once it goes from there, then you you bug bash it and try to make sure that it's good to go, optimize it, and then release, right? Sometimes bugs get out of control. Sometimes, like, one <coughs> little thing means 12 giant things sure. as a result. It's, I mean, it's, it's very possible. I, d- I just don't know. I mean, I don't know that outside of seeing a different news story, and I haven't dug into it because I don't, I don't go down rabbit holes on a whim, or not even a, not a whim. I don't want to be dismissive of him, but, like, I have not done a lot of research to make sure that there aren't reports that the game is already completed, right? Yeah. On the other hand, um, Rocksteady's always seem to be a fairly upfront company, um, and they, with at least with the Arkham games, right? So if they say they need nine more months, I'd rather give them nine more months than push out a game that is broken. So. Do you think there's a chance? Th- I mean, do you think that some of these companies do do this marketing gimmick of let's let's push a hype machine for a generally cruddy product because we need that we in, need the in, yes um in in relation so to hype is, absolutely yeah uh, when when he talks about hype i feel like um that was kind of the reason i picked this question originally was to have a discussion about hype right yeah so for me i don't know about you but for me i'm a large I'm a firm believer in the fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, won't get fooled again. George Bush's, you know, famous <laughs> uh, saying that he, no, um, that w- I've been burned and multiple times by video games that looked great on paper and had wonderful trailers and they came out and they were dog shit, right? Mm-hmm. So now I try as much as I possibly can to not prejudge a game, good or bad, and this goes back to what we were talking about before, based on trailers and hype and things like that. Yeah. Let it come out, right? Like, I understand that that you can be really, really excited for a game, but for God's sake, there's so many games that are out all the goddamn time. There's always something to be get excited about. Sure. And you can also get excited about a game. You also have to just be careful about... I've always, it, maybe some of it's come from reviewing, and maybe you can talk to this as well, because it, when you guys kind of give your opinions in a more formal fashion on like television shows or whatever, whenever you... Whenever you set out to review anything, I feel like one of the first hurdles that you have to get over is not judging the product based on what you wanted it to be, but based on what it is. Like it's to say, very true. Breaking Bad is a terrible show because there aren't nearly enough machine gun fights in it. You go, well, that isn't the kind of show it is, you know. Which I mean, it's 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 hard to get over some of those prejudices. In fact, I was just talking about Gotham, and I was like. Eh, right. I I can't help but but be tied heavily to the source material that sure. that some of this is drawing off of, and and to distance myself, it's like. Eh. But it's yeah. Uh, the main thing to remember, though, of course, is that it's not an absolute, right? Sure. We're all humans, so you are going to get excited. You are going to expect certain things, and there are also reasonable assumptions that you can make. Like, let's go back to the Star Wars trailer, right? I can reasonably assume that the dude with the red tri lightsaber dressed in black is probably a bad guy. Yep. And if he turns out to be a good guy, I don't want to... You are monkey-wrenching us, JJ. Right. You are monkey-wrenching us. And if he turns out to be a good guy, I don't want to be so set in stone with my expectations that I can't have that happen and rebound from it, Mm -hmm. right? Is it because something was different than my expectations? On the other hand, it is also irrational to say... Nobody should ever have any expectations ever for anything at any time. Yeah. The whole thing is just a shitty gray area where you're never going to be able to make a definitive statement. Uh, but the thing that I can say to you, Clayton, is just don't try 
try to keep your hype in check and remember the times that you got burned and say, if it's a great game, you can still totally enjoy it without getting super, super hyped up ahead of time. Or maybe you deal with getting let down better than I do. I don't try not to get myself get super, super hyped in case it, the thing comes out and it's garbage, right? Yeah. But if your heart is able to take the strain of constantly being like, it's going to be the best! Oh, it was the worst, you know. The- I mean, when you reference TV, I mean, the finales for those things, a lot of those big shows like Breaking Bad, yep. how can it possibly live up to the hype of everyone else's different expectations for how it needs to end sure. their way? It's not going to do it. It's going to end its own way. <laughs> True Detective 2. Man, we have to know every fucking person who's cast in speculation on that constantly before they actually do get cast. It can't live up to that hype, can it? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. But I mean, it's, it's at, a, at a certain point, you just need to kind of dismiss it and just absorb the show as you can. That might actually tie into our first question of saying that, like, I don't know that there's been a game that came out this year, and I don't even know if this is a good judgment, that had a lot of hype behind it and then lived up to or exceeded the hype, mm. right? So that's a that's a rare beast these days, right? Yeah. And just the amount of shit that we're putting together and putting out there. You know, um, who can say? We're too hungry for the constant news. I, th- I feel this. like, you know what I feel like it is, Grant? Our bar is too high. Our bar is too high. We've got so many wonderful things in this world that whenever anything is just like mediocre, and I'm, I'm totally guilty of this. You're just like, oh, fuck that. Fuck that bullshit. We have, yeah, yeah you're I mean, absolutely right. So, all right, we got a few more questions. All right. Uh, this next one is from... Oh, our friend Ruskles from the Patreon videos. Ah. Says, hey, guys, praise the Dong Lord and all that. Uh, I know this isn't your wheelhouse, but with the slight decline in real-time strategy games, do you see anything rising up in the near future? I'd personally love to see another Command & Conquer game, but I know EA would just mess it up again. Hope you guys are well and keep up the great work. Powerbeard, a.k.a. Ruskles06 in chat slash Patreon videos. Um, so, you know... I don't know how much experience you have with this. None. You, none? Okay. All right. I uh, have enough from playing games with you on here, but that's about it. Yeah. I feel like um, the decline of real-time strategy games is directly proportionate to the rise of MOBAs and eSports. Um, they used to make RTS games. RTS games are real-time strategy games. It's like uh, StarCraft or Command & Conquer, things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, they used to make those games with a pretty hefty single-player campaign. In fact, I love more than anything. Uh, have you ever played any of the Command and Conquer Red Alert series, Grant? Yeah, where they had the just you know fucking Tim Curry and like all the crazy Playboy playmates and just crazy people coming in right to do all the all the stuff, um, mm-hmm. all the uh, live-action cutscenes. I love those games. I think they're really fun. The problem is that I don't think that they sell. I think that you can that rather than spending the time to produce that stuff. You can make an esports focused RTS like StarCraft, like the uh, multiplayer sections of StarCraft 2, and it does way better. And that games like Warhammer 40K, uh, where they had expansion after expansion that seemed to be making them at least a little bit of money, um, uh, just don't work anymore. You know, it's, it's weird because I went to E3 and they showed me a new Command and Conquer game the year that Jason and I went last year, right? Yeah. And I went up to this booth. They were like, here's this new Command & Conquer game. And I was like, what the fuck? And I played it. I was like, this is great. I really want to play this. This is going to be a free-to-play, primarily multiplayer-focused game where it had microtransactions and stuff in it. And I was like, this is great. This is really fun. Uh, and then they canceled it. <laughs> and I'm just like, fuck, man. I've been waiting for Command & Conquer Generals 2 for a long time. But you know what? Um, you know what, Ruskles? I will give you this small bit of hope before we move on to the next question. Plenty of types of games plenty of genres of games yeah wax and wane but few ever go away forever um even if they they I mean uh before telltale it, well and there's a few other indie companies and in, and a few companies in europe that do games uh uh adventure gaming for about five years there was just it was gone right there was no adventure gaming or mm-hmm. and then telltale kind of started doing their episodic stuff and then the walking dead hit really big um, and now you've got more of that stuff out there. But it used to be something like Gemini Rue or the Deponia games were outliers and not something you would see quite a bit. Um, turn-based strategy is 
you know, kind of on and off. It's a very niche market. Tech space. Where are those? We need more of those. Actually, there is. In the indie market, there's, there's some tech space? There's some stuff on the internet. I, there's a few. There's a game that I, uh, uh, that I um, reviewed a long time ago. I think it's called Love or something like that. That was a fake dial-up browser game where it was a MUD. Or, you were, or not a MUD, but a BBS that you were fake dialing up to. And it was a whole narrative. It's great. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think that anything. I mean, I think that um, I think the other thing that that is definitely going to make for the decline in real time strategy games is that it's very difficult to play them with a console. Yeah. So if you make a real time strategy game, it's going to be PC only, and a lot of there's been a lot of movement to consoles, so it's kind of hard to make that work. Hmm. All right, let's see here. We got uh, you know what? Let's see. I want to take us to these questions. We got bomb ba buoy. Ba-ba-ba-booey. We got uh, here's a short one. I'm going to cut this one, and let's see what we got here. And I'm going to keep that one, and I'm going to keep that one. And Brevity, folks. Um, short questions get read. Okay, we got one long one and two short ones. Okay, all right, here we go. This comes uh, from our friend Hakel Hakel, who uh, emails us from time to time. He says, "Dear Jeff and Grant, I have a quick question regarding horror movies." Uh, maybe it's just me, but I feel the horror genre is more frequently discussed than any other film genre. seems that people would more often have a discussion on which horror movie or horror icon is their favorite, while there is far less discussion on other non-horror-related subjects, such as which joke in a comedy made you laugh the hardest, or which romantic development in a romance movie was the most heartfelt. Why is that, why is that the case, though? Do other film genres not offer as much room for debate and discussion as horror genre? Is it perhaps due to horror movies being able to invite a greater emotional response from audiences? If that's the case, do other genres generally not have as great an emotional impact as horror movies do? I would love to hear your opinion, and thank you for reading my email. Regards, Hakel. So, niche genres, and I think he also nailed it with the emotional response you get from it. Of I fear. think those are the, the, the two things that like really distinguish it. I mean, I could say, hey... We could, we often have discussions on what's your favorite comic book adaptation or, right. or Marvel movie because I think that's another niche market sure. that really drives a, a fervent fan base. But they have this whole emotional element of fear that that also really ensnares the audience. I also feel like horror more than any other like uh, like movie subgenre has uh, more of a culture built around it, right? You don't hear people say, like, I'm a drama movie junkie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some cases in action a little bit, but action doesn't produce as many movies as, like, horror does, right? There's a lot of horror movies, a lot of bad ones, a lot of good ones, right? And there's a rich history. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to draw from, a lot of different experimental takes a lot of different movements within the horror genre Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean it's great to draw upon you could maybe say there's sci-fi people as well and i said you could you probably make the same case for general nerddom in sci-fi and fantasy right yeah the people who are into don't get me started on the people the musical people (laughs) they love their musicals (laughs) yeah you know the other thing though is i feel like i mean I can't speak for anybody else for this question, but at least for you and I, yeah, we also have like four or five friends who are die-hard horror movie people. Yeah, so it's like possible. In your face. Yeah, it's possible that if we were hanging out with a bunch of musical people or a bunch of people who are like real big expendables action movie junkies or things like that right sure but i uh, clearly we hear about horror people even outside of our circle sure it's it's just a known thing that it's a community that has been cultivated off of this this specific genre of film Um, you know it's also possible that maybe it i'm just spitballing here this could be completely off base but it's also possible that the horror movie people have a more tightly knit culture because that genre for a long time was under attack a lot for the violence and the gore. I mean, the whole video nasty thing in Britain where they were, you know, people were tape swapping and things like that because mm. they wouldn't let those things on the screen or the way that horror movies, I think a lot of times some people look down on horror movies. So I feel like a lot of times there's a good reason for them to kind of close ranks, right? To defend their hobby against other people. It, it's kind of like they're the, 
the bad boys of of the geek film community, right? <laughs> like they're the ones that watch the seedy, scary stuff. Right. That like that's it's very much this this tough guy kind of machismo. I I dare you to watch this one thing. Right. That other people kind of look over at them and are like, oh man, that crowd. And and therefore they're this they're this click within yeah. the community that is more notable. Yeah, I think a lot of different reasons. Yeah. Also, it's it's entirely possible that a lot of it just comes from the fact that um, like horror movie fans are very loyal to their genre and will go put up. They'll put up with a lot of crap. <laughs> oh yeah. They'll put up with way more crap than people from other genres. Yeah. Because because they're very loyal to their genre, right? Is that. I mean, you know, you see, a, I, I like action movies, right? Mm-hmm. I think Expendables is some of the worst fucking movies I've ever seen. I won't defend them. I'll throw them <laughs> directly under the bus on fire. Fuck the Expendables too. You throw them in under the bus, watch it light on fire, and then walk away when it explodes. Right. Whereas I know horror movie fans that will sit there and defend things like Troll Two or, or you know, um, Ch- Chud or you know things like yeah, that yeah, to yeah, you yeah. for hours on end. What's so. wrong with them? They have a sickness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I know. That was very dismissive. Like, what's wrong with that? Yeah, they're they're fucked up. They're, they're fucked up. <laughs> All right. Uh, dear Jeff and Grant. Okay, I'm sorry. So this is we got two more left, right? And these okay. are these are pretty easy going questions, right? Cool. Uh, so this is dear Jeff and Grant. I've heard you guys speak briefly about the music you like, but I was wondering what genres or bands specifically you find yourself always going back to. I always find myself going back to the music I love, which is mostly Bruce Springsteen and classic rock, and sometimes EDM. Weird mix, I know. Uh, After trying to listen to other genres. I might only be 22, but damn it, I hate most music out there today and can barely even listen to the radio. Thanks for answering this question. Uh, You guys are awesome. You're a little fan from the old days and loyal Sydney-based patron, Jason D. Jason D. Jason D. Um, So... What music do you find yourself going back to again and again and again, Grant? Uh, shit. A lot of radio pop music yep. that just pops on the radio. Something that just gets stuck in my head. A little earwig, whatever. What, what do they call them? Earworm. 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 <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> earworm. But uh, that stuff, I, like, I'll go on Spotify and I'll just have a song pop in my head. I'm like, yep, I'll go ahead and just listen to that right now. Sure. Instant gratification. Uh, other than that, I often go back to any particular genre of pop music or, or era of pop music or anything in particular. <sighs> I like uh, hip hop a lot. Yeah, more uh, hip hop rap. Okay, uh, that that genre when it's it's poppy. Otherwise, I'll go to kind of my alt rock era of uh, late '90s music that I kind of grew up on. Weezer, mm-hmm. I'll go back to a lot. Yep, me too. Uh, they're a lot of my go-to, uh, and then I'll just kind of listen to indie music now lately. I'll, I'll try and find new new stuff that pops up. What, what's that one? Um, all songs considered, uh, I'll go listen to all songs considered. Uh, NPR's little oh. they'll they'll put new kind of interesting songs on there, and I'll find one that I like from there. Um, I generally, I mean, I'm with you where there's a, there's a certain grouping of songs from when I was like 16 through 19 yeah. that are, that are like putting on a nice old t-shirt, right? Yeah. Like, a lot of mid nineties alternative, uh, like it's the stuff that I post it when I'm drunk at four o'clock in the morning. It'd be a crap song that you're kind of embarrassed by, like. Two Princes by Spin Doctors, but you're like, yep. fuck, that just gives like a well of like nostalgia that I'm like, ah. Yep. Uh, it was actually post-80s, like in the last 10 years that I've really fallen in love with the 80s uh, and the just kind of shit. I, I kind of had this idea that there's very there's no genre of music. Mm-hmm. There's no era or specific genre of music that there isn't something worth listening to in, right? Sure. Um, or or you may not like it, but like one of the things is that I haven't listened to new music, Quotey Fingers, in a long time um, because I feel like I'm just now cracking my own personal locks on liking classic rock from the 70s, right? Ah. I'm only just now starting to dip my toe in that. But I went through, you know, when I was in my 20s, I went through a big new wave or first wave ska thing. 
did lounge music for a little while. Hit like that uh, classical. yacht rock era. What's that? The yacht rock era. What's yacht rock? Uh, Michael McDonald and oh. uh, Kenny Loggins and yep. Christopher Cross, all that shit. Yep. Hollow notes. <laughs> yep. Uh, but generally, I mean, I think there's just there's a lot. The best stuff that's out there, I don't know. Uh, it's it's easy to find good stuff. Like what's weird the other day is that I realized that when I was in my teenage years, we spent two hundred bucks or more, like every week or two, on music. Just buying music at uh, just Waterloo Records here in town. Two hundred bucks. Yep. We used to just buy the shit out of stuff and we always prided ourselves on finding like these weird and rare things so there's like bands that i know about that you just kind of assume that everybody else knows about and knows how good they are but people don't because You're only they're a couple years older than me yeah napster hit when we were around that age mm-hmm. but the problem with like napster I was just freeloading <laughs> all sorts of shit but the thing about napster was that napster had popular stuff on it and i was looking for uh. djs from britain right and like weird shit from japan uh that nobody had ever heard of before so yeah i just wanted to listen to asia's heat of the moment and limp biscuit nonstop. <laughs> did anybody like heat of the moment before the 40 year old virgin no, i don't was- know <laughs> But it's so good after that moment. I remember. I remember that uh, the day the horrible realization that uh, "Where Is My Mind" by the Pixies was really only very popular because of Fight Club. That before Fight Club, people knew. I mean, people obviously knew about the Pixies before Fight Club, right? Sure. But that that song in and of itself, when you hear it at a bar, is probably somebody playing it because they remembered it from Fight Club, not yeah, from yeah, yeah. the Pixies. And that was album. the Not a Surf version, right, on the movie. I don't think so. I think it was Not a Surf. I don't think they use the original. Not a surf. They sing that popular. That's a popular <laughs> song. Yeah. Oh, I fucking hate that song. I kind of <laughs> want to punch Not a Surf in the face. Uh, All right. Last question. Last question comes in from Volva, who says, Volva. Hey, Jeff and Grant, this year has been pretty strange. Call of Duty was good. Assassin's Creed was bad. I challenge you to make predictions for 2015 for which games will be good. And your most anticipated one of 2015. Thank you for all content live streams and rage on from your devoted fan, Vova. Um, Predictions for 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think we kind of addressed this already a little bit with that PS4 question, but uh, I think it'll be a stronger year, right? I mean, according to Jeff. Uh, I think so. I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll for down this list and I'm going to say things that I'm excited to play. Okay. <laughs> uh, because usually when we do this, I sit here and I try to think of the things and I always forget half of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to roll this shit out. I know what you're excited to play. There's you're probably excited about Batman. Yeah. Everybody is. Yeah. Uh, I showed you that Uncharted 4 trailer. Hell yeah. So you're excited, More about, excited that. about that. Even. All right. So let's see. Saints Row is coming out with a Gat Out of Hell, which is the new DLC for Saints Row 4. Gat Out of Hell. Yep. Uh, let's see. Dying Light is the new one from uh, the guys that make uh, Dead Island, I think. Uh, uh, okay. Let's see. Evolve. Okay. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2. Um, the Witcher 3. Big into The Witcher 3. If I haven't shown you anything from The Witcher 3, I've heard everyone's flipping their shit for Witcher 3. Witcher 3. Witcher 3 looks absolutely fantastic. Witcher 2 is great, and I love uh, CD Projekt Red as a company. They're one of the only companies that I love because they treat, they've treat they treated me very well personally in the past. They sent me a review copy of The Witcher 2, and they let me sign up online to go into their private E3 showing of The Witcher 3, and then when I got to there, they tried handing me Polish beers because they're from Poland and a huge swag bag. So Pretty badass, Witcher. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne. Really excited for Bloodborne. What's Bloodborne? Bloodborne is the new one from the Dark Souls guys. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, or from the guy who made uh, um, uh, Miyazaki, who made Dark Souls One and Demon Souls. Uh, Batman: Arkham Knight. And here we got a bunch of unscheduled releases. Uh, be 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 bo- bo- um, let's see here. Anything sticking out? Dead there? Island Two. If Dead Island Two comes out, uh, that's the one that had the trailer that I think had. It's possible. Have you seen the trailer? Was the guy's running down the street and he turns into a zombie? Have you seen the trailer? Uh uh-uh. uh The guys hit him at the end, and it sounds it's definitely one of the guys in the in this van is Jack Black, and the other one might be Aaron Paul. It might be a zombie game with Jack Black and Aaron Paul in it. What? Uh, let's see. Maybe. Uh, Dead Island Two. Beep, 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 boop, 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 boop. Fortnite. Kind of interested. Halo Five. Uh, Guardians. Um, Just Cause Three. Uh, let's see. Mad Max. Mad Max game. Mm-hmm. 
Metal Gear Solid Five, definitely Metal Gear Solid Five. No Man's Sky, definitely No Man's Sky. Have I shown you No Man's Sky? No. Uh, Persona Five, really, really interested in Persona Five. Uh, Quantum Break, really interested in Quantum Break from the guys that made Alan Wake. Alan Wake, Quantum Break. Oh, they rhyme. Rise of the Tomb Raider, I'm interested in that. Uh, let's see here. Star Citizen, if it actually does come out, I hope. Uh, What's that Star Wars game? Star Wars Battlefront, holiday 2015. That's not really super confirmed, but if it if it comes out, I'll be all over that. That's the it was a multiplayer shooter that's kind of like Battlefield 4, but it was with Star Wars. So you got into X seriously, and, yeah. It was a franchise that they have uh, uh, brought back right from the dead for um, this n- next year. Cool. Um, let's see. If the new Legend of Zelda comes out next year, that's on this Wikipedia list that I'm looking at. I actually am kind of looking forward also to the Majora's Mask remake. Uh, the new Rainbow Six game. The Division. Ubisoft has really been letting me down. I'm not sure. There's Uncharted 4 again. And, oh, uh, yeah, the new Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii U. I'm actually looking forward quite a bit to. What's the next uh, Naughty Dog game that's not uh, that's not the Uncharted one? There is none. They make one at a time. No, that's not Uncharted. Uh, do they have another game coming out? No. They really? put out Last of Us Remastered this year. That was the game that they put out this year. Next year will be Uncharted 4. Naughty Dog <sighs> hasn't made anything but an Uncharted game outside of The Last of Us. Really? In a I long time. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I'm pretty... Okay, you know what? I make a definitive statement. You check to make sure that you're not talking out your ass because... People just love to tell you when you're talking out your ass. Uh, Uncharted, Last of Us, Last of Us Remastered, Uncharted 3, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 1. The last game they made that was not an Uncharted game was Jack X Combat Racing in 2005 on the PlayStation 2. <laughs> Since then, it's been nothing but Uncharted outside of The Last of Thank Us. Thank you, Wikipedia. So, And you know what? With that, we're done. We're going to get a long one this week. We so. did it. Yep, we did it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening so much all the way to the end. Uh, if you have a question, mail at RageSelect.com. This mail at RageSelect.com is the one to send it into. If we skipped over your question this week, I'm sorry, but we had a limited space. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Thank you for all the Patreon donations. We do really appreciate it. You guys are mm-hmm. keeping this alive. Yep. Thank you, all you newcomers. Yep. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, let's see. Uh, join us back here tomorrow for another dojo. Yep. yep. Bye. Bye.